Transformers, RID, SCI.FI, Mecha, Alien, Non-Cheat, Villain, Original Protagonist, this is the story of the villains ultimately leading to victory. I originally belonged to the Transformers and Humanities as a miscellaneous soldier. The plot development of early chapters 1.19 closely follows the official RID anime series 1 and 2. The subsequent storyline will be separated from the official animation storyline, and a new original storyline will be created, at the time of writing, the official content had not yet been released, so it will be separated, the opening protagonist is an original character, with two points of involvement in the official background. This character has experienced war and is currently set in the official RID animation. There is a part of the mercenary stage between these two points, and the mercenary group is not officially set, so the waves in chapter 1 are not sound waves or oscillatory waves. The early positioning of the character used her as a female. At a specific outcome, the use of Ta will be changed based on the final selected outcome. Due to the fact that many settings in the official animation are not explained, there are many settings for the second creation here. For example, in the creation of reasoning about the past of official villain characters, I will fill in the audience of brainwashing waves that appear in the animation performance and their brainwashing principles, which are not included in the background of some of the characters in the second creation. But since the official RID animation itself did not specify the settings, it is estimated that the second creation will not look too discordant. Also, I only like a part of Transformers, RID and 08. The original outline and a portion of the plot were finalized between 16.19, but there has been no time for improvement. Now I finally have time. Chapter 1 On Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio a Decepticon dressed in black and green paint was betrayed by two former partners. Oh no wait how can this be called betrayal? Betrayal is so unpleasant. The correct understanding of the betrayal that occurred to this Decepticon is that two brave and fearless Cybertans, who disregarded their own safety and lurked in criminal gangs, successfully completed their long-planned anti-bandit mission just now. They deserve the title of heroes in the mouths of the people. This is the glory that the messengers of justice deserve. As for these suppressed bandits, I can't tell you too much about them. See for yourself. Don't look, right. Isn't that proof that you are not the one I am serving? This transaction of exchanging equal pleasure for a short period of time did not cost anyone. In the recidivism detention area ah, uh, forget it. I won't say that this place is so beautiful, let's be honest and tell you the truth. After all, the previous page has already played a role in dissuading some people, so there is no need to repeat the effort in the future. In the reception area of the prison, the two heroes mentioned earlier are also here. Heroes will appear in such places, naturally receiving a notice from their superiors to come to the scene and confess their guilt. And she, who was betrayed, is not far from the hero's position. Right across from the hero, she was pressed onto a chair by two prison guards who were even wider in size than her. After arriving here, the Decepticon showed a very uncooperative behavior. Even if her shoulders were pressed down by two large units, she ground and stepped on the floor, causing the light strips hanging from the ceiling to sway a few times. The distance between the heroes and the Decepticons is only one table apart from the prison guards. One of them was holding a wanted notice with her photo printed on it, standing under the swaying light above their head and taking two steps forward to get closer to her. After turning back several times and carefully comparing the photos, I finally came up with the completely affirmative answer. That's right, it's her. The limiter worn on the neck prevents the Decepticons from speaking. It should be noted that some units, once imprisoned, will find it difficult to enjoy the legitimate rights and interests of Saishing citizens that they originally had. How to catch and destroy a criminal hideout For some experienced units who are often surrounded by the protagonist's aura, this is not a particularly difficult thing. The fact is that without aura, it is the norm. The content in bold parentheses in this paragraph can be selectively skipped without affecting the storyline reading it is only the loss of time and the inability to reunite with family, which is unavoidable. 
Apart from the inevitable time and reunion, there are also other issues to face when destroying dens. A little more tedious procedures are needed, such as flipping through criminal records to understand the various crimes committed by members, and using reading comprehension to speculate on their habits, style, how to get along, and possible forms of rupture. In the habit item, it includes the time and frequency of energy intake, as well as the details of personal time arrangements. I won't go into too much detail here to express it in a subtle way. After reading the above preparation work, it is not yet over. We also need to have a meeting to discuss and decide on a combat plan with the least damage and the highest feasibility. Afterwards, we will go through internal member screening, dress up and change into suitable equipment, infiltrate dens, collect evidence, conduct inspections, encircle, capture, monitor the ward, interrogate, and then go to court or arrange for imprisonment directly. During this period, the frequency of internal and external collaborations is definitely frequent, so I won't give more examples here to avoid suspicion of word stuffing the review that needs to be reviewed is now completed, and the confirmation that needs to be made is also completed. So the righteous heroes should quickly hand over this mess to the prison guards here, and then return home to reunite with their long-lost relatives. If there's nothing else, we'll go back first. Walk slowly. It's been hard work. Without responding to the pleasantries, the wanted notice in hand was placed back on the table. The people on site walked away to cool the tea. The prison guard, who was pressing down on her left shoulder, let go of the pressure and ran to turn off the video recorder on the table next to her, pulling out the storage card inside and putting it in the bag beside her. Seeing that the prison guard on the right couldn't hold her down even with a single pressure, she had no choice but to let go and let her fall to the ground floor under the force of hard work. Dot. The muffled sound was within reach, followed by a burst of pain. She fell to the ground on her side, and the feedback from the mechanism felt that the temperature of the plane she was in contact with was icy cold. The Decepticon wanted to sit up and stay away from the coldness, but her body was constrained by the shackles, which made her remember but couldn't get up. The sophisticated shackles confined her hands to her back, and the underground flying device was fitted with a coated buckle. No matter how fiercely she struggled, it was useless. Even the part of the foot ring has been secured with ankle shackles, which shows how difficult her current situation is. Who makes bad things always come one after another. From the moment she arrived here, she had already been deprived of the ability to act. This behavior, including speaking, is also limited. So just now, what exactly has been reviewed after the review? Shouldn't it just be a program to create fake accounts? Hmm heroes. It's a pity there are no heroes here. The hero just went out. Besides, it's not her hero either. She needs to go to jail now to make up for the food she has lost over the years. Despite being sentenced to tens of millions of years in prison, it's hard to say that one can still get through the bottom of the prison. Let go of me. Let go of me, you guys who should go back to the furnace, let go of me. As soon as the collar on her neck was removed, she was lifted from the ground by two other prison guards who had just entered the room and had a sturdy model. The shackles that bound her legs were heavy, making it difficult for her to lift her legs even after leaving the ground. What room for resistance is there to talk about? The answer is none at all. Decepticons, she probably won't forget what some units that only know how to think with their own dicks have done to those poor civilians in her lifetime. No, wait. Things shouldn't be like this, you can't, the only thing worth being happy about is that the terrible thing that the poor commoner encountered did not happen to her. The hallway of the prison is filled with surveillance cameras. She was rudely thrown into the cell, with armor rubbing against the ground and leaving marks, indicating that the two individuals who had just framed her no longer had the need to maintain human rights against a guilty person. Perhaps if they still communicate with her, it is already the last equality they can give her. Listen up. I can't stay here forever. Thanks to being protected by a helmet, I was able to avoid falling into a daze. The Decepticons knelt and sat up with their head carved on the ground, 
shouting unwillingly at the two prison guards outside the iron railing. Because if time permits, she won't stay here for too long. Her accomplices who are still outside will definitely try their best to bail her out. She will once again pass the loophole in the Saixing law and be punished lightly by those units in court. Or perhaps arrange a scapegoat to replace her. Just like going through a program, she immediately returned to the less turbulent society and continued to mess around, even though she had just checked in a second ago. Being released on bail should have been just a matter of time for her. Your property will be confiscated, and you will soon be taken to another place. Your crime has exceeded the scope here, and you have the right to remain silent like other criminals, H.C. Segments all point to, you. The sentence is filled with pertinence between words. X.A.N. thought. Beyond. How could it be possible? It's like hearing a sensitive word that shouldn't appear. Instead of thinking, angry emotions instantly flooded the CPU, and she slammed her body into the iron fence in front of her, trying to say something for herself. Or some seemingly meaningless excuses. No. That's not my name, I was knocked down before I could finish speaking. Her attempt to prove herself in exchange for the current from the high dot voltage electric gun filling her body. The piercing pain that spread throughout her body in an instant made her feel like there was just a momentary blank in the CPU. Nothing left. The Decepticon in prison lost consciousness at the moment when the tip of the electric gun penetrated the body. Now lying on the ground, motionless. She finally became more honest. Let's go, there's nothing we need to do here. No one would want to hear a criminal's defense. The hallway they left was filled with the roar of criminals and the sound of knocking on the prison door. Some of them were counselors who were originally kicked out of high positions by their peers, while others were scapegoats who were influenced by others. But most of them are criminal units. The noise here has hardly stopped for a moment since it was built. Fortunately, the electric shock just now allowed this newly arrived Decepticon to have a good night's sleep until tomorrow. I have heard that a dying unit will look back on its brief life. So for this Decepticon criminal who has committed such heinous crimes and is about to be taken to another planet for disposal, I wonder what she will dream of on her first night here. She will probably dream about some past events. Some insignificant past experiences that are immediately forgotten by spectators. My original name was H8A1015Z26I9. When I was a unit created in a black workshop, I was just working on a construction site. I learned on the day of its launch that this black workshop had opponents. The appearance of the opponent gave Hong a headache. Without common sense, I chose to be obedient and become a spy for my opponent at that time. But when everything was over, I almost died. I can't forget that at the end of the spy mission, Hong did not fulfill his promise to give me a free exchange. I am still a slave on the construction site. Fortunately, I ran away before they treated me as a plaything and naively thought of establishing my own home. But I don't know what to do. I don't have any partners to work with, so I can only search for energy everywhere on other planets, struggling to survive. As I wandered around, I had an accident one day when I was sucked into a space bridge. Because of this accident, I returned to Cybertron. My place of belonging, I should have been born here, not that ridiculous alien, black workshop. I met some good chip companies on my first stop here, they helped me, and then I left. Fortunately, I found a job locally afterwards, at an inconspicuous store. To be honest, I hardly saw any customers walking towards the store, I also know that I was pitted by the shop owner to live here. Not long after getting to know the shop owner, my otherwise mundane life reached a turning point. Once, I was tidying up the things in the store. During the process of flipping through the boxes, I accidentally found some digital boards that recorded videos. There are many digital boards in the box. But strangely, the available space on each one is pitifully limited. Almost all of them are fully stored. At first, I thought it should be some old movie or TV series. Without much thought, I made a copy of one of them. 
As a result, the copied content was not what I had imagined. Not the kind of film magazine used for daily entertainment. More like something hidden as evidence to witness history. The picture quality is very blurry, and the sound is barely audible. It can only be distinguished that a group of units are causing controversy in some open building. But I can't distinguish what they're really fighting for. The unit painted in silver white in the picture caught my attention the most and was also the most I dot catching. Because almost all the shots in the video were shot around him. At that time, I didn't know his name. I only heard in the video that his unit called him a tyrant. Tyrant. What kind of excessive behavior did it take to be called that? The silver coating, he is a silver tyrant. I looked at the screen and silently called him in my heart. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any information after watching it, so I ran to copy other digital boards and saw other videos about him. Only then did I realize that he was also at the bottom. I am particularly shocked by this. After learning about the initial identity of the silver tyrant, I became interested in the blurry controversy surrounding the scene I first watched. Starting to search for his information, I found out that he has established an organization called Decepticons and has been doing a lot recently. I have to say, I like the way this silver tyrant behaves in society. And his controversial speech in Parliament and now on forums. Probably because they all have the same underlying experiences. I left the shop that helped me shortly after, chose to join them, and branded my right forearm with a mark called Decepticon. I changed my gear, received unified military training, and followed his call and footsteps to go to other planets. Even though I am just a miscellaneous soldier on a warship, I am still happy to follow behind such a unit. I should call him His Majesty Megatron now. Your Majesty's call has not ceased, the goals achieved have never stopped. Come to my senses, I have been with him for millions of years. But when I saw him being pierced by the yellow painted Bopai warrior with a sword. I feel like my core is broken. The connected terminals are also in chaos, unable to think about the past that filled my core with heat. I cannot make myself full of fighting spirit and shoot back the enemy outside the window, let alone prevent what has already happened outside the window. I could only feel endless sorrow, sorrow, and the desire to fall with him to the blue star. On that day, I finally chose to run away, just like other miscellaneous soldiers. I used a higher limit escape pod without authorization. Landed on a planet far away from the blue star, but close to being abandoned. After seeing it clearly, I realized that this was actually a place where His Majesty had led us to fight. Now there is only waste soil and smoke left, and there is no longer the prosperity of the past. Looking back now, I may not have lost my ability to think before making such a decision. Because at that distance, most vehicles could not return to Cybertron. If I lose the ability to think, I would never make a decision to use an escape capsule. I it was actually consciously what have I been doing for millions of years. The fact that the silver light illuminating the bright road ahead has turned off is an unchangeable fact, I shout on an unguarded planet, cover my face and cry, and even after crying, I don't need to find any explanation. After resolving my sadness, I took off and returned to my hometown. I was lucky not to die on my way back. However, the environment here is still the same as before leaving, lacking vitality. The scorched earth makes it difficult to move the land in my hometown. I flew back to the shop that I had disturbed before joining the army. Qinghuang is my only destination in Cybertron. I thought nobody was living here anymore. But when I arrived at the entrance of the store, I realized that the owner had not left Cybertron. He has been waiting here for me to go home. I thought the cleaning liquid had already dried up outside, but when I heard him say wait for me to come back, the tears in the frame burst again. He accepted me again, and I also unloaded my gun as a warrior. Remove the equipment from your body and use the stove to melt down the warrior's ikai. He supports me in destroying evidence of my identity as a warrior. Leave only the gun for his safekeeping. We must have some self-protection weapons before this war is over. 
we rely on each other, trying to go back to the past. The gift left for me by the war, lost heart syndrome, did not let me go after I chose to let go of the past. This kind of illness has been bothering me, making it impossible for me to go back to my old life with him. But he still treats me well. But I don't want to drag him down. My hesitant thoughts hidden at the bottom of my heart made a decision one day soon after. Not long after, the Autobots who wielded my majesty's hand also returned, leading the surviving soldiers to rebuild Cybertron. I did not see his majesty's figure among the returning masses. I don't want to follow any news related to them anymore. I only know that day by day, more and more units that fled during the war have returned to Cybertron. Under the leadership of Autobots, Cybertron became increasingly prosperous. On the other hand, it is also developing at an equal speed. While Cybertron is bustling, it is also becoming increasingly chaotic. The shops in the West District Wine Street soon received customers, and the units that remained closed also began to circulate information from the outside world. Surprisingly, there was news that ordinary people couldn't believe, and the police began working for the bandit leader. I don't care about the protection of officials, it's just that there are hidden incidents of factional discrimination that have emerged after the war, which makes it impossible for me to ignore the situation that those compatriots are facing. The goal of both factions back then was to revive Cybertron. Why did the losing party receive such treatment after the war? I don't understand. Is the losing party the wrong one? I can't bear it anymore. I bid farewell to the shop owner and left Cheng Huang. Don't let him be dragged down by what I want to do next. The hatred in my heart actually made me want revenge a long time ago. Before I returned to my hometown, on that planet, no. It was even earlier. I have been suppressing this desire like a torrent that requires breaking a dam to satisfy. I want to trouble a company that is an Autobots. I just want to trouble the company that is an Autobots. I also need to use them to earn commissions, buy better equipment, and live in better houses. My identity as a veteran has earned me respect and appreciation in this area that I only heard about before, but did not step into as much as I do today, in order to avoid retaliation and unexpected trouble, as well as to seek a certain degree of safety protection, I bid farewell to the days of working alone after a period of time. For the long-term development of high stability in the future, I chose to join a mercenary group, this group calls itself, Hundred Caves. Before arriving at the Hundred Caves, I was also not interested in the corporate culture of this group. But I have never felt like today that a breach of the embankment could bring me such joy. After coming here, it seems that even, lost heart syndrome, has not bothered me again. Originally, if I had trouble with the Autobots, would there still be a company holding a dinner party for me to celebrate, and it is shared by all units, I have to admit, I suddenly became interested in the culture of this group's faith. Perhaps this is a good remedy for treating, war fire loss of heart syndrome. But things are unpredictable. The group encountered an unexpected situation today, and even myself, including the captain, were arrested and imprisoned. Repeated malicious injuries, assaulting police officers to obstruct official duties, and damaging buildings resulting in casualties are the crimes they have set for me this time. Where will they escort me? Humph. Anyway, it won't be a good place. I don't look forward to it at all. Let me out quickly. In the prison, the prisoners who are imprisoned here have their perception of time forcibly closed upon entering these cells. I believe it is impossible to accurately calculate the time, which can also be a torture for them. A few days later, groups of armed units picked up anti-riot weapons and stepped back into this place. Open the prison door, gently move your hands and feet, and raise your hand to launch another electric shock at the unit inside with the explosion dot proof electric fork. A group of prisoners were forcibly taken offline in this way, some of whom fainted without even having a chance to scream. They are now being taken to another planet to receive the sanctions they deserve. Several guards dragged the electrocuted prisoners into the hibernation pod. The observation window of the dormant cabin quickly forms a layer of frost when closed. 
the prisoners lay peacefully inside, like sculptures without any threat. After confirming that the list of prisoners had been loaded, these cabins were uniformly arranged to be towed onto a spaceship by several trailers with the same riot prevention logo on them. After everything was checked, the guard standing on the spacecraft saluted the riot guard below the deck. The riot guard on land also looked up towards the deck with the same etiquette, wishing this mission a smooth sailing. The spacecraft's equipment has been charged and taken off. Their next online launch should be the day when their flames are extinguished. Where will she be escorted? Anyway, it won't be a good place. The sound of collisions outside the cabin woke her up. The abnormal frequency of the impact sound awakened the consciousness blocked by the cold. Perception recovered, only feeling that the surrounding environment was extremely cold. The cold air that filled the cabin did not completely leave the encirclement on her, but instead kept pestering her and refusing to leave, causing her consciousness and the bright light source in the mirror to dim again. The backup power supply of the cabin lasted for weeks before finally running out of power. It's like reaching the limit of use, the spring that controls the opening and closing of the cabin door collapses and opens when the power is depleted, and the white and translucent cold air flows out. The open window, with the moisture sliding in, quickly covered the originally formed frost on the body inside into a layer of pearl water covering it. Have we arrived at the station yet? The optical mirror slowly lit up the brown light source. She woke up. Inquire about the destination towards the light source shining on the face. Unfortunately, the light shining on the face is not the flashlight or headlights of any police officer. The special product of this planet, the sunlight, makes it a bit difficult for her to open her mirror. No one on site will answer her, nor will anyone answer. Fortunately, the surrounding environment is not gloomy silence, but filled with the chirping of birds. It sounds so lively and lively, okay, I think I'm back in this remote and impoverished place again. The humid air and blue sky, like a unique specialty of blue stars, both familiar and repulsive to the composition of steel-type life. Belonging to is coming once and never wanting to come again. The former leader of the Decepticons once brought his army to this planet called Blue Star, which is why the Decepticons said. The Blue Star was a heart-wrenching place for her, as she witnessed His Majesty's fall from above. But now is not the right time for deep affection and strong affection. Go. A single word can also cover a sufficient amount of dislike. She kicked open the half-open hatch in front of her and flew the hatch that protected her from being thrown away at least thirty feet before finally giving up. Cabin. I didn't mess with all your units. It's a pity that the cabin can't speak. The dialogue channel is also not in the same dimension. Otherwise, she and the other Decepticons would definitely be able to hear the scolding. Chapter 1. On Earth. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Leaving the hibernation pod and looking around, she saw a considerable number of already opened hibernation pods on the ground not far away. At first, the chip hesitated for a moment and didn't dare to approach, so it opened the built that IN medical spark detection device to explore the path first. One second later, she received good news from the report page that the Decepticon tracking signal, which was forcibly buried inside her body when she was arrested, was not displayed on the page. The display of the device only shows that her current signal frequency is a normal Cybertron life signal, not a Decepticon. Tisk, just as she was thinking about expanding her search range to see if there were any other Cybertans nearby, the medical equipment turned off. Drop the chain at a critical moment. It seems that this equipment was not intact during the fall. It should be a malfunction. I have no choice but to personally go and confirm. But when she approached, she realized that the cabin was empty without exception. There are more than just these, playful edges, that can be seen at a glance on the surface, there are also other things here, such as the pile of broken iron pieces that were thrown together not far away, not sure if they were fragments of spacecraft vehicles. The spaceship carrying the criminals fell too badly. It's really miserable. Just looking at these wreckage makes her spine feel cold. 
looking up at the boundless blue sky, looking back in the direction behind me. Seeing the playful flute that had just changed its original shape after being thrown, a chill suddenly surged in its core. If it weren't for the loading protection of this cabin, I would probably have ended up with scattered limbs. Maybe they wouldn't even have the chance to witness their own tragedy. Ha, huh, the more she thought about it, the more sad it became. The cooling fan blades inside the body wanted to alleviate the heat dissipation mechanism of stagnant air, which only made her feel that her body was getting colder and colder. She sat down on the upside-down hatch next to the ground, letting herself slow down. Heart is not so sad, the evil heart feeling subsides. The top priority is to first understand one's own situation. Why did the spaceship crash? Is it possible that there is a problem with the escort vehicle? Or rather, they encountered atmospheric pressure issues halfway and planned to throw a few down to reduce the weight of the vehicle. Hee <laughs> hee it's really stupid to offer small protection. That's really a good joke the Decepticons were amused by the cold joke that suddenly popped up in their hearts. Sit there and give a few dry laughs. Her unit likes some weird jokes. It's difficult for people to figure it out. Ha ha ha. Ah joie. Joy brings sorrow, but that's not what it means. With a smile on her face, she suddenly uttered foul language. The reason was that she had just checked her fuel tank with the built that IN statistical system and found that the oil inside had been drained to the point where no drop was left. Is there anything more infuriating for her than hiking on this damp and muddy planet in this remote and impoverished area? The answer, of course, is yes. Because the statistical system also told her that there was a lot of noise in the communication, and there was no other response when dialing out. I believe it must have been smashed when it fell down. Or there may be a malfunction, this means she cannot find reinforcements from Cybertron to come to Blue Star to rescue herself. It seems that she must live in this terrible place she thinks for a while now. She will starve to death if she doesn't have to bear the burden, and this kind of burden is unnecessary. Do you remember that Her Majesty led an army to this planet? She has lived on a blue star and knows how to find the energy to sustain life here. For her, the current situation is just a return to her previous state of life. It's not about starting from scratch. Okay, okay. Sigh, it sounds both helpless and complaining. In short, she is currently facing a single topic selection, with only compromise and acceptance of compromise options. The water droplets on the body that haven't had time to air dry mix with mud and become soft. Looking at the wet and soft soil being stepped on underground, her expression became disgusted and she quickly relaxed. Sighed. Support your knee armor and prepare to stand up. The back pain caused by prolonged lying can only be supported and padded. TSK, it shouldn't be. Originally, I only had a back pain and helped my lower back but unexpectedly, I touched a physical object that shouldn't have appeared here. She vividly remembers losing her weapon during the siege and not being able to retrieve it. But now this pair of magnetic crutches appears in the fixed buckle on my lower back. It seems like I've been carrying it with me all along, without any experience of losing it. Did I make a mistake? No. As soon as she thought of this, she hurriedly opened the gun slot in her arm to confirm a sudden idea that had sprouted in her heart. Seeing the gun that had been forcibly dismantled now lying inside, her expression changed from shock to an angry frown. She has now confirmed her thoughts, otherwise how would she explain that her lost weapon has returned to her side? It's almost there. She can guess from this development. It was definitely her accomplice in Cybertron who had already, almost, released her on bail. However, time didn't wait, and she was packed and shipped into these playthings. It's really unlucky. I gritted my teeth to suppress my angry emotions. Although the chip may be unwilling, the Decepticons still need to recognize the current situation. I can't waste any more time on myself. She checked her gun before closing the left arm side cover. The appearance is the same as the last time I saw it, the bullets in the loading slot have been used up. 
The long dot range weapon that cannot be fired is of little use to her, but she still needs to put it away because maybe she will have a chance to fill it up in the future. Lift your legs and swing to catch the soil underground. If you can't shake it off, rub against the grass next to you. Don't worry about whether the grass hurts or not in the heart. She walked towards the wreckage of the spaceship not far away, searching and picking inside. After searching for a while, she finally managed to find the long piece of iron sheet she needed right now. Pat the dust off the surface and wrap it around your right forearm to cover the Decepticon logo. This symbol has been kept since the day she left the army, and she couldn't bear to erase it. Because her idea is that one day the Silver Tyrant may summon us again. She kept it all the time to satisfy her inner delusion. Even though he knew he couldn't come back, he was forever asleep. The delusion and pain that Decepticons cannot express to the outside world when they put down their inner core. She perked up and retrieved her previous lifestyle from the system's memory, living here for a period of time. Her luck is quite good. On the second day after leaving the forest with spaceship wreckage, in the suburban area, a local indigenous gas station was found. By disrupting monitoring on local road sections, the problem of short-term fuel consumption was solved. He also returned to the forest and retrieved several empty and leak-free sleeping pods to store excess fuel for future use. Based on the current distance, she knew that even if the reserve fuel tank was full, her vehicle form could not fly back to Cybertron. Because the distance is too far. After more than a decade of coming here, many aspects of operations have become familiar and have returned to their previous best state. Her life gradually improved and became more nourishing through hard work. I also found a dry cave to use as my temporary residence. After settling down in life, she also began to consider what she would face in the future. After all, she couldn't be willing to stay here for the rest of her life. So she went back to the forest where she had woken up. Because maybe we can find something useful there. Just like in the past when cleaning up the battlefield, we always find something to take advantage of. However, to her surprise, she met the Autobots warrior who had killed Her Majesty here. Or in a form that she would never have imagined. The appearance of the bumblebee is not within the various assumptions she once fantasized about. Stand there and don't move the Decepticons. She was originally searching for something in that pile of wreckage without looking up, when she heard someone behind her telling her not to move. At first, I thought Saixing had sent interstellar police officers to Blue Star to catch her. But when she turned around, she saw that the person who came was actually the soldier she had been thinking about day and night when she decided to become a mercenary. It's him. Why is he here? The warrior's appearance is deeply engraved in her processor. Even if the warrior's appearance had changed from before, she could recognize at a glance that the Autobots in front of her were the unit she had been thinking about day and night. She dreams of getting rid of him and seeking revenge for her fallen emperor. But she had no way slash channel to find any information related to the Bumblebee after the war. What she could do after the war could only be classified as criticism. Now, facing the sight they pointed at her, although she was full of anger, she also felt a hint of strangeness. The unit in front of him, Bumblebee, has made great achievements, but his current identity is actually a police officer, and he looks very ordinary. It's a bit strange that the great hero who saved Cybertron now holds such a position. What exactly is he sent to do this job of catching fugitives for? Is his identity really just a police officer? The hero who saved Saixing actually became a police officer. No wonder I can't find his information. Who is she? I've never seen her before. Compared to the general public, the information of government-recognized units is indeed more difficult to find and has higher rigor. The suspicion has not yet ended. At this point, the Decepticons are not facing the encirclement of an Autobots warrior. When she shifted her gaze away from the Bumblebee, she realized that there was still a blue and white painted Cybertron woman standing next to the Bumblebee. It was an iron wrist that also raised the energy crossbow in her hand. All the current questions have not been answered one by one, 
and they can only look at each other, and the suspicion and suspicion hidden in sight. She didn't dare to act recklessly when she saw them facing her weapon. The Decepticons, painted in black and green, stood in place, their faces showing no real anger from the inner core. Instead, they sincerely raised their hands and made a surrender gesture in their direction. Chapter 1 On Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio She also spoke the following impromptu lies in an urgent tone. No. Don't misunderstand me, buddy. I'm just an interest group, a member of the Interstellar Exploration Group. I'm not one of those notorious villains. Look, there's no sign of a Decepticon on me anywhere. Please don't hurt me, I just want to go home. The spoken language is unclear and anxious, while the Decepticons are explaining, as urgent as if they have been wrongly accused. The fact is that her chest and shoulder armor, which are commonly chosen to be marked, do not have any distinctive features. How did you appear here? I am just a member of a small group, an interstellar exploration team. I am collecting features of different planets and doing report assignments. Please do not harm me. Although she doesn't seem to have any signs of belonging to the Decepticon faction on her body. But from the perspective of car enthusiasts, there are no other units on the Blue Star besides them. There should only be Decepticon fugitives. And now, a unit claiming not to be a Decepticon has emerged here. It's really strange to think about it. However, research groups like this are quite common in Cybertron's colleges. Similar to interest clubs or similar. Upon hearing her explanation, the young lieutenant raised his gun and pondered for a few seconds before choosing to believe her. Put down the energy gun in your hand and signal the student police officer next to you to do the same. Their weapons no longer pointed at her, but towards the land next to their grounding. Sorry, we scared you. We thought you were a runaway Decepticon standing here. Lieutenant Bumblebee explained their recent behavior to the Decepticons who were surrendering not far in front of them. Sorry, we thought you were a fugitive. Faced with the apologetic words of Captain Autobots and the weapons he had put down, the Decepticons wished they could take a swift step forward and tear open his chest armor, then extinguish the bright spark inside. But the Decepticons understand that they need to remain calm now, and they don't know if they have any other weapons yet, are there any other Autobots around here? For safety reasons, she needs to confirm these concerns first to ensure no worries. Seeing that they would not pose a threat to her temporarily, she also lowered her arm and asked, what happened? Officer. What does escape mean? She read from what Bumblebee had just said that they were here to catch the Decepticon fugitive. But in reality, she acted as if she didn't understand what was happening now. She is suppressing her emotions. Even though there are millions of fantasies in her heart that she wants to erase from the bumblebee, she understands that she must remain calm, otherwise there is no possibility of realizing these fantasies. Even if the fact is that there is only a one in a thousand chance, she still wants to fight for it. This place is far from Cybertron. How could the Decepticons be here? The light in the mirror cannot suppress the desire in the heart. She bit her lip and looked uneasy, just because the corner of her mouth wanted to lift upwards. The body suddenly shook and looked at the nearby trees with a panicked expression. Her attempt to conceal her emotions was seen by outsiders as being wary of the surrounding environment, worrying about the sudden emergence of dangerous things in those green plants. Seeing the unidentified Cybertron approaching them with a frightened expression, he looked as if he wanted to seek assistance. The student police officer next to her suddenly became alert when they saw her approaching. Do you have any evidence to prove that what you just said is true? The police officer once again raised the hunting device in her hand. She is questioning the authenticity of her confession. You still ask her that. What is her explanation for this? Let's continue reading. No. My companions and I got lost and everything that could prove my identity was also dropped there. My communication device was also damaged and I, there is no evidence. Please don't harm me. She lowered her head from the side of the mirror, 
avoiding the dangerous arrow pointing towards her in front of her, and confessed her disadvantages like a weak person who accepted her fate. After speaking, she gave a bitter smile in the direction of the ground, because she really couldn't provide any strong evidence to prove the authenticity of her lies. It seems like an isolated and helpless innocent passerby. Her series of performances and body language seem to be telling the outside world that she is just a unit in need of help. But as long as you want, you can shoot at her alone at any time, right? The weapon is in your hands. You certainly have the ability to determine where the scope points. Don't be so ironclad, she's just someone in need of help. The bumblebee lowered its grip on the crossbow and arrow, stopping Iron Wrist's slightly neurotic behavior. It seems that her acting skills are not worthless, she is secretly pleased in her heart. However, Iron Hand still does not support the decision of Bumblebee. Iron Wrist was just a superficial compromise just now. Lieutenant, you should remain vigilant. We don't know her, and we can't believe a single word from an unfamiliar unit. Although the crossbow and arrow in their hands were lowered, the police officers remained firm and believed that they should always remain vigilant. Who made them encounter many unpleasant things during their time on Earth? It is inevitable that one will not be neurotic. The current situation is really an awkward atmosphere. As a third party on site, should the Decepticon step forward and say something to reconcile the anxiety caused by her in the atmosphere? Seeing these two Autobots conversing with each other's eyes, she also guessed new intelligence at this moment that Bumblebee was definitely the superior of this police officer. No, please don't do this because of me. I think this police officer's vigilance is a good thing. If it were me, I would definitely do the same. Please don't blame her. She didn't scare me. The Decepticons expressed their understanding of the behavior of the student police. While speaking, he also shook his outstretched hands, using this type of body language to urgently express his understanding of the vigilant behavior of the student police. Because the Decepticons knew that the student police were at fault, it was already a fact. The young lieutenant heard this and looked up at her, feeling in his heart that she would be a good talking unit, the police officer glanced at the Cybertron and then glanced at the light mirror elsewhere, completely lowering the hunting tool in his hand. I'm glad you didn't misunderstand. I understand, I also do this when encountering annoying things. You can think so seriously. I think we can help you. I intended to express my admiration for her generosity, but the young lieutenant first shifted the topic that should not have been continued and offered help. He wanted to express some practical actions for what happened earlier, rather than just a one-dot-sided apology. Really? Hmm. We will do our best. What I just said. Hmm. My communication device has encountered some malfunctions that I cannot solve. I need to inform my colleagues as soon as possible, as they are not aware of the existence of Decepticons here. I am very concerned about their safety, as they are the most beautiful units I have ever encountered in school. Unlike the panic and urgency just now, she spoke a bit embarrassed because she hoped to get some help from the Autobots. Apart from the Autobots, there seems to be no other object to seek help from on this blue star. Then come with us. Friendly units are always likable. Isn't it? Bumblebee is happy to help the unit in need in front of them. And it's also the type that's particularly easy to talk about. Obviously, the young lieutenant has temporarily determined that the unidentified Cybertan in front of him is an innocent crowd. You're serious. That's really great, thank you for being willing to help me. With permission, her expression relaxed. The surrounding environment is dense with branches and leaves, and the light that can shine into the forest is much dimmer than before, when she first returned here, because the blue star's sun is about to set. This Decepticon, taller than any of their models, witnessed them turn around. The exposed back armor is reflected in the black-brown light mirror, and her heart is silently reciting at this moment, wait a little longer, she didn't take a big step, she followed them with small steps. Worried about losing pace may sometimes appear rushed. She pretended to be curious and turned her head to look at the constantly changing scenery around her. 
Iron Wrist had already lowered the sight of the crossbow just now, indicating its attitude. But they didn't retrieve and put their weapons away like a hornet. The Iron Wrist remained vigilantly clenched in its hand as before, as if ready to lift it up again at any moment. The brown aperture in the mirror reflects the backs of these two Autobots. She was staring at her enemy, which caused the image in the light mirror to shrink with the lens. At the same time, the iron wrist walking behind the bumblebee seemed to feel something at this moment. Suddenly turning back to confirm. But only seeing her with a curious expression, focused solely on the surrounding scenery. I completely didn't pay attention to myself and the lieutenant. After a brief pause in following, she extended her knuckles to glide over the emerald leaves above her head, allowing sunlight to follow the changes in the leaves and shine on her body. The warm feeling made her smile. She bent down, crouched down lightly, and reached down, seemingly just to touch the beautiful berries growing from the low shrubs on the ground. The steel knuckles only picked up the berries and glanced at them, unwilling to destroy them, all the movements look so small and delicate, I don't want to disturb any units present. The radiance covered by the body at this moment is like a statue that has already been carved, and there is no doubt that it is a real physical existence. The curious appearance of the unit she just met in the forest reminded the student police of the days when she first came to Earth. I was also curious about everything around me that I had never seen before. It seems that she didn't notice the police officer's glance just now. Her attention was all focused on the densely growing plants around her. Iron fists couldn't bear to disturb her who had just arrived on Earth. I think she will keep up with them after being curious enough. Iron fisted, turned around and continued on the journey with the bumblebee. Tisk, confirmed that the police officers are finally no longer monitoring themselves. The Decepticon stopped this series of intentionally childish behaviors and even shook their hands towards the ground in disgust. Because the positions of these dwarf plants are too low, some leaves still have residual dew that has not evaporated completely due to sunlight. Steel-type organisms generally do not like water. She followed them. Seems to have gradually reached the depths of the forest under my leadership. Or perhaps it was walking to a place with more dense branches and leaves. Or perhaps the sun is about to set. The Decepticons can feel that the light transmitted in here is starting to decrease. I walked such a long way and didn't see any other Autobots. Decepticons feel that perhaps it's time to take action now. It's time to do something you've always wanted to do, we're here, however, it is at this time. The Decepticons were just about to pull out the cane that was tightly fastened in their waist buckle when they saw the bumblebee lifting a branch that blocked the view ahead with its hand. What? We're here now. We haven't walked a few miles yet, why did we get to Joie so quickly? All right now, it's time to get to the hometown slash headquarters of the Autobots. I knew I had started earlier. Upon hearing that the Autobots had arrived at the base, she immediately became displeased. It seems that the Decepticons will have to wait a little longer until the next suitable period. Chapter 1 On Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Reflected into the mirror socket is a place surrounded by walls. It doesn't seem like a heavily guarded military base. The building ahead is similar to a factory building. The Decepticons currently do not know what factory this is, they only speculate that this may be a place for producing certain parts. She stopped in place without further thought, keeping up with the bumblebee in iron wrist ahead. Stop in front of a heavy sliding door. We're back now, the words had just fallen and the door opened. The heavy sliding door is electrically controlled to rotate and the wheels roll. When saying this, Bumblebee sent a text message with the same content to the command center inside the waste factory. She followed behind them and quickly followed in. The door is only half open. The screen on the other end of the surveillance screen immediately closed upon seeing them enter. Since stepping here, the view is like being confined to a sandbox by walls. The space here looks very large and spacious, even units of the Cybertron size can have enough space to settle down. Just as they stepped here, 
the Decepticons noticed a pile of ornaments on the ground not far away. The ornaments on the ground are made of metal and have a matte texture. The degree of paint wear is very similar to that of newly unearthed antiques. Perhaps these things are handicrafts from this planet. Or is it some special small object? Small accessories. In short, the design is quite unique. It seems to be carved from the same mold the focused lens reflects the outline of the model, and the Decepticons are attracted to these objects. To confirm her thoughts, she stopped following and walked towards the direction reflected in the light mirror. At first glance from a distance, the layout felt quite messy, but upon closer inspection, she realized that everything here was neatly arranged in an inconsistent pattern. It's a little squirrel sigh, do you remember when she didn't know squirrels before, she would call them rainforest flyballs. She had seen small creatures with similar shapes to these models on the blue star, and often saw them during her time following His Majesty, including when searching for energy a few days ago. The place where the blue star is covered by vegetation has always been full of vitality. The location of the factory building is close to the forest, and now it is daylight again. The Decepticon's receiver can still hear the faint chirping of surrounding insects and birds. They are all audio of life and vitality on this planet. Perhaps she doesn't like the environment of the blue star and really likes the little creatures on it. Did you gain anything from today's patrol? Horizontal Cannon Upon hearing the audio of the bumblebee, she turned her attention back. Because the owner of the audio is also reminding her that the purpose of her trip is not to go shopping. Decepticon squinted at him and saw Bumblebee communicating with a red-painted Cybertron approaching. His answer is, as usual, staring at others and eavesdropping on others is always impolite behavior. After realizing her obvious mistake, she pretended not to hear and turned her head back. The black-brown light mirror looked at the various objects placed on the ground. Squat down and place your hands on your knees to make your limbs appear as natural as possible. Start paying attention to the current situation. Focusing on the lens, a model of an orange squirrel shaped like a hand holding a cereal is reflected in the lens. Xian Xiang The small carbon machine is much larger than the previous ancient spirit and monster. Has it evolved from organic materials to metal materials? Hmm this is really a good joke, Xian thought so, and even though he was secretly enjoying it, he dared not make a sound. Maybe she really enjoys cold jokes. However, it has been proven that even if her tall body crouched down and didn't want to be eyed dot catching, Hung Pao still noticed this foreign guest not far away. Bumblebee, who is she? Hung Pao discovered her and also inquired about her identity. The bumblebee turned its head and looked at the empty ground where it was squatting, as if she had become interested in objects on the ground. It's a unit that needs help, just like the name of a hornet has become a sensitive word here. When she finally heard someone called Bumblebee here, she felt like she received a signal to throw a cup. It's time, I saw the Cybertron people squatting on the empty ground just now suddenly stand up and turn to face them. This made the first time I saw her unit feel that her model was really tall. At first, Heng Peoxin was slightly surprised, but she didn't expect that she would now have the same surprised expression, looking in the direction of him and Bumblebee. The dark brown darkness met their bright azure gaze. The appearance of this scene seems to be telling the audience that some units are inherently antagonistic characters. Wait, sir. Did you just say, Bumblebee, dot? Even though she had already heard the other person's name Hung Pao just now, she still called Mr. Hung Pao in front of her. Just like she didn't hear it earlier. Yeah, what's wrong? After receiving the expected response, she excitedly clasped her hands tightly together, looking as if she were a nun seeing a miracle descend into the temple. She made a devout prayer gesture towards the open space on one side without hesitation. Because next, she will start reciting the scriptures that she had just planned on the road. Oh my goodness you look different from before. I'm amazing, idol. The hero who saved the world and Cybertron is standing right in front of me. He also helped me. 
sing praises to the gods and I'm lucky to see them. The Cybertron people, painted in black and green, were all focused on talking to themselves. The expression and tone of her special emotions were extremely exaggerated, as she watched the bumblebee mutter to herself, the words she uttered at this moment all revealed the immensely excited emotions within her heart that could not be suppressed. God bless me. Sing praises to God who has heard my wishes. She was happy, only focused on talking about idols and singing praises to the gods. Like a career that I have been pursuing all my life, it has now been liberated. Are you a fan of Bumblebee? Even if the answer is already clear, but Heng Pao still asked the Cybertron man who was standing not far from them, holding his head in both hands and suddenly covering his chest. It seems that if she doesn't do this, her spark will jump out of it the next second. I heard Heng Pao ask myself. She lifted her leg and took a step forward. Such appropriate body movements are like telling our audience, so please take a step to speak. Yes, yes. Keeping only one step closer, she didn't dare to approach too recklessly. It seems that even though she is a fanatic, she was not overjoyed by the information she received for a moment. At least there is no crazy fan who, like a mad dog, immediately pounces on an idol when they see a touchdown, toe. Her small gesture of taking a step forward and immediately stopping her hind foot looked extremely gentlemanly. It seems like they are all trying to express themselves, even if they like her, they will leave enough personal space for the person they like. I feel like my spark is about to stop beating. It's my true self, my true self, not a projection or photo, it's the essence. Excited and unable to speak clearly, I finally smoothed out the soft chain. I didn't move forward any further except for one step earlier. The behavior of the Decepticons is a show of respect and reverence towards the hero who saved Cybertron. It feels like I've really seen my so dot called idol. I didn't recognize it just now because I was afraid. I thought it was your imitator. I've seen many units imitating your paint color scheme in Cybertron. You're the hero who saved Cybertron. All Cybertron people know this. The volume emitted by the speaker fluctuates and is somewhat uncontrollable by the excitement of the heart. Does she seem to be explaining herself? She was clearly praising the lieutenant in front of her in an indirect way. The continuous praise output made the already happy Bumblebee even happier upon hearing these. But he still said humbly. Actually. It's not as exaggerated as you said. Decepticons can sense the true emotions hidden beneath the humility of the bumblebee. He is very happy. She quickly added another sentence. To affirm the words spoken above oneself. Really, I really think so. You look even more handsome and strong than in the photo. She can feel that he is very happy now. But just then, something unexpected happened here. Strong. I don't know whose keyword is strong here, and who's paying attention to it. In short, the emergence of new characters is worthy of the enduring patience of the Decepticons. A deep magnetic sound came from behind in the direction. It seems that besides blue and red, yellow has other accomplices here. What kind of character would it be? Who is it? It really makes me look forward to it. Dot. Excited inside, but not in a hurry to look behind. You should know that your current surface focus should be like a fanatic, all poured into the bumblebee, that's right. The Decepticons stood still listening to the movement behind them, waiting for the unit to approach towards them. He looked completely indifferent, as if he didn't care what kind of enemy the newcomer would be. Because of the two things she saw earlier, she was greatly disappointed with her fellow members of the bumblebee and very happy. She felt that she had a clear chance of winning and would not be disturbed by the new characters that appeared. Let's continue. The praise is not over yet. Don't be so humble. I think only those units that have seen your true self can affirm those descriptions. I'm sure, you describe them even better than those units that have seen your true self. She still didn't forget the role she was playing now and continued to please the hornet in front of her. 
the sudden heavy footsteps behind her slowed down her already planned speech by two beats. The earth is shaking, the sound behind her made her feel as if the earth was shaking as she stood still. The body language and language that were just excited stopped when they heard the other person gasp for breath at close range. Upon hearing the commotion, she thought to herself that the other person was definitely a very large character. He is definitely not someone to be underestimated. Due to understanding certain rules, even if one has the same tonnage of weight as most Cybertans. Even if she is not a car enthusiast, she knows that walking lightly and not disturbing others is a good habit that should always be maintained. But the guy walking behind him, if he tramples on it without reservation, at least there will be more than two tons of movement. The Decepticons gave up on entering a state of excitement and incoherence again. Excited by standing still and hiding in his heart, he finally turned around to look at the visitor. Perfect, the answer is revealed. The ending she prepared for the lieutenant faced the dinosaur machine in front of her. I don't know who is perfect here. The dinosaur machine reflected in the mirror's eye is tall, and the model is stronger than any other Autobots here. They must be taller and stronger than her. The surprise of the Decepticons at this moment comes from the core. The light mirror that looks at dinosaurs is straight. Because she saw in the dinosaur the power she had long longed for, and the aura of being able to uproot mountains and trees that she could not possess. Chapter 1 On Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Coincidentally, this dinosaur machine and she have a similar color scheme in their livery, the Decepticons have dealt with these big guys before and even had direct conflicts. She only feels in her heart now, I didn't expect my aesthetic to be the same as that of a violent maniac. Similar color schemes are applied, with only the difference between yellow and white on the face. Ha it's as if she's not herself. May I tell you that the charges for the arrest of this Decepticon include destroying public buildings and infringing on the property of others, she has committed far more violent acts than just being charged with this arrest. Actually, it's normal for her to think so. Who makes common sense materials always have consistent descriptions between different units. For example, dinosaur machines have four major characteristics. Strong strength, loud voice, strong temper, and large tonnage. This is a fact widely recognized by the public that common models of dinosaur machines are well dot known. Even scholars who have not had contact with them and only learned about them from digital books believe so. And when these four things are added up, it is not difficult to imagine that they are equivalent to ordinary dinosaur machines and possess terrifying destructive power compared to ordinary Cybertans. Thinking and recalling the past can sometimes be accomplished in an instant. The next second after facing the dinosaur machine, the Decepticon trembled all over and his expression began to shrink. I also asked in a probing tone about the dinosaur machine that has now approached me. She is asking knowingly. Oh. Are you, a dinosaur machine? Yes, the straightforward answer dispelled the concerns of the Decepticons. After receiving a response, she blinked at the dinosaur and let the cleaning solution briefly moisturize the mirror in its socket. The previous recoil and retreat on my body have disappeared, but now it has transformed into a gentle curve at the corner of my mouth. It's the kind of smile that feels like all the trivial matters have been resolved reasonably and relaxed. This is much more interesting than staying at home and watching those boring digital tablets. Today, I actually saw a real dinosaur machine dinosaur, which is amazing. This. This is really the best day I have ever had. Yes, that's right, stay at home. There is no expression error here. It sounds like a student who has just had a vacation and happened to encounter something interesting. She deliberately sighed and accentuated the concluding tone to show that she was really what she said now. Upon hearing such affirming language. The listener naturally has no reason to be unhappy. Yes, dinosaur machines have always been great. The answer was accompanied by a sound of mechanical movement, as the dinosaur machine transformed into a humanoid standing posture. The standing dinosaur humanoid has a certain height difference from the original dinosaur posture. 
This makes it much more convenient for them to communicate, and the height of the model allows them to look at each other level. The dinosaur introduced himself to her, his name is, I am Steel Rope, seeing Steel Lock introduce herself, she also said her name without hesitation the second after hearing the reply. Hello Steel Rope, my name is Z891, it's a dinosaur machine for Autobots, it's really rare. It is truly a wonderful combination that the vandalism on the outside can actually form a combination with the Autobots who uphold justice and protect peace. Think of a set in the core and make a set on the surface. It is not difficult to see from the equally positive performance that the Decepticons really want to make friends with Steel Rope. Just as she finished speaking, she extended her right hand towards the Steel Rope. I want to shake hands and get to know him. Without much thought, the tightrope reached out and grabbed her. Little did they know that the scene of their handshake seemed like him to some extent, it's like witnessing the social rituals of two different races, dinosaurs and humans. Although this handshake ceremony was devoid of any grandeur. It's just a very ordinary swaying on both sides. While just looking at this arm, I feel like you're really strong, Mr. Steel Rope. What was different from the timidity he had shown before was a completely different burst of laughter. The Decepticons looked at the face of the steel cable and praised it so much. She exclaimed and chuckled, both friendly and exclaiming at something worth it. Her expression is sincere. When shaking hands, the Decepticons naturally shifted their gaze upwards towards the arm of the steel lock. Only then did she realize a fact that she had seen with her own eyes and would not believe. Why doesn't the Autobot still have this logo? It shouldn't be. The facial expression may seem calm, but in reality, shock and doubt emerge from the heart. The shoulder of the steel cable bears a different emblem from the car's present. He is a Decepticon. But why do car people see steel cables just like they see their own people? completely lacking the alertness that the student police officer should have had in his previous impression. Forget it, just ignore it for now, Decepticon believes that there is no need to use unnecessary language to adjust the atmosphere at this moment, because she feels that she should not take the great atmosphere that has been created so hard to develop in another direction. Now there is no need for any expressions of shock or fear to join the performance for the time being. Besides, Autobots are not afraid of him, why should they be afraid? Do you think so? The expression of the Decepticons in reality is still natural, ignoring the information received visually just now. Only praise the steel cable for its strength. You're right. I'm a very strong steel lock. I promise I'll be the strongest dinosaur machine you've ever seen. Well, you really look very strong much stronger than the dinosaur machines I saw in those digital textbooks, whether it's illustrations or mimetic projections. Unlike the ecstasy and loss of composure during the pursuit of stars just now, it appears to be a calm scholar who dares to give a definite answer after careful consideration. She is really good at taking people to eat. I'm afraid she has everything that others don't like, she can all pretend. Their handshake arms are still swinging up and down. This is a bit too long for a unit that is used to ending meaning in just a few clicks. Perhaps the steel cable doesn't know how to stop. Or perhaps it's more appropriate to stop at some point. That's for sure, you also look great, hmm. It's rare to receive such recognition from others, and Steel Rope couldn't help but feel proud. I also want to reciprocate and praise her kindness. Just before the steel cable had figured out what to say, it was in a hurry to speak first. This simple and honest big boy has overlooked his lack of experience in praising others. Unable to come with your mouth open. Seeing the steel cable stop there, the Decepticon felt quite embarrassed inside, but in reality, there was still a hopeful expression on their face, waiting for the other person to finish speaking. After spending at least three seconds of silence around her, she finally heard the tightrope say, your paint is also very nice. The brain module is not very agile and it takes a lot of time to think. She classified her as a violent and destructive person, but thankfully they praised her. Will she not feel guilty? 
After hearing Steel Rope's praise of their taste, the Decepticons finally found an opportunity to naturally end this handshake ceremony. Faced with praise, she withdrew her hands and covered her face, as if shy, hiding her smile behind her palms. Mr. Steellock, you're really good at talking. I'm glad you said that. It's really rare for anyone to praise my paint, and I also think black and green combined are cool colors. Adjust your emotions. After putting down his hand, there was a polite and warm smile. She also didn't forget to praise the dinosaur machine in front of her with words, and then continued to say, I think the description of dinosaur machines in the book database is not entirely correct. You are not as brutal and reckless as described on the digital board. The information recorded by scholars from the old era always portrayed dinosaur machines as ferocious machines, perhaps the dinosaur machines of the old era that scholars have seen are indeed like this. Only units that have truly experienced them know what dinosaur machines are. Perhaps it's time to overturn and update the common sense of the old era. I must write this into an essay when I go back. The Decepticon said happy words to coax the dinosaur machine. She admitted that the database was correct, but the one in front of her was an exception. You are very friendly, Mr. Steel Lock. You are the first dinosaur machine I know. I think getting to know you is a lucky part of me, and I think it may also become a breakthrough point for me to surpass other units on my academic journey. Every body movement and every speech of the Decepticons have a temperament that only scholars possess. Her well-thought-out words were the result of analyzing the truth and the solution to old ideas. But she wouldn't really do that. The warmth emanating from the brown light mirror is no less than the one towards the bumblebee just now. However, both physically and emotionally, there was no excitement or loud expression. The role she is currently playing is just hoping for, and hoping that the illusion can be answered correctly as a studious scholar. Mr. Steel Lock, can you tell me something else? You are a rare opportunity for me. I have many questions that I want to ask you. The pair of hopeful light mirrors and the series of crazy attacks really made it difficult for this simple young man to refuse her. Fortunately, the processors of dinosaur machines have always been straightforward and simple. I think even if she doesn't have such meticulous thinking, the dinosaur machine won't refuse her. I can tell you anything you want to know. Proudly looking up. Take it as his unique capital on this planet. Because the scholars in front of me seem to really appreciate me. Steel cables are happy to tell her some answers that are not available on the digital board, which a modern dinosaur machine would have. That is to say whatever you have. That's great. I'm so happy, Mr. Steel Rope. Me too. Sir, I feel strange listening to you. Just call me the Steel Lock. Hmm. I will make changes for you. Next, it's the dialogue mode where you ask and answer. Although for Decepticons, they are all boring and childish questions that have been known for a long time. However, she listened patiently to the dinosaur machine in front of her, occasionally expressing surprise or sudden realization in response to the situation. I see. I never thought of this step. It's beyond my understanding. I believe what you said, Steel Lock. Can I ask you some other examples? Whatever you want to ask, feel free to ask. Give dinosaur machines enough respect. It's like a difficult problem that has been confusing students for a long time now finally being answered by a professional lecturer. Perhaps the Decepticons are really suitable for playing a good student. She must have been a student before, that's why she performed so freely. As a lecturer, the dinosaur machine was happy to continue answering questions for her, while standing on the side watching Little Red and Little Yellow, who had been talking for a while. While speaking the latter half of the sentence, Hang Pao leaned over to the audio receiver of Bumblebee before speaking, I remember she just said she was your fan. Do you remember? A good partner is jokingly trying to enhance the relationship between team members, which is why they knowingly ask. It's really the same pot that doesn't open. Bumblebee fans don't even glance at Bumblebee anymore. Obviously, learning is more important than chasing stars. Um. 
Horizontal cannon, don't you think Steelock and her seem to get along quite well? The young lieutenant pulled the topic aside, as if to ease the awkward aura surrounding him. And Heng Pao also agrees with this. Yeah, it looks like Steel Rope has found a confidant. As they were talking, a mini diamond painted in orange was slowly moving towards their position in the direction of the command center not far from the base. Bumblebee, I heard you just brought back one, Sanji at. Commercial percent dollar, the iron wrist who had just left told him about what he and the bumblebee had experienced in the forest. That's why he came here. Coming for the wounded. Iron wrist also came with him. She quickly squatted down and patted the back of the mini King Kong when she heard that he had a small problem, speech malfunction. Plus. Injured. Thank you, Iron Wrist. The bumblebee heard that it turned its head to look at them, and then turned its head to look at the other person, who was still talking about something. The two painted and color matched individuals were, one person, one dragon. The black-faced god also followed the sight of the bumblebee and looked in that direction. We met her in the forest. Her communication device is malfunctioning, and we need to help her connect with her companions. Okay lieutenant, this iron wrist just told me. Chapter 1 On Earth, Upper You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ah, it turns out that iron wrist just left first to find a doctor for this outsider. She is really a helpful and good girl. The camera turns to a person and a dragon not far away. As if in an important discussion meeting that could determine the fate of a specific race, they have been chattering about something. No one can disturb the dedicated chip team. From just now until now, except for one side being quiet and waiting during the other's response, in the impression of Hengpao, they seem to have endless words to say. Perhaps none of the car enthusiasts present have ever seen steel cables so active on a topic. Steel cables often have conversations with car enthusiasts that are not on the same channel. Cross-channel chat. For example, sometimes seeing the same thing but not thinking of the same thing. Sometimes it can even be disappointing. Of course, Autobots also know that steel cables are not intentional, and they have become familiar with them. Besides, it is widely known that car enthusiasts generally dislike violence. And now, the dinosaur machine has met a confidant who understands him. That's why he talks so much, I'm sure he hasn't been so happy for a while. The processor of a dinosaur machine is somewhat different from that of a typical Cybertron, and it is understandable that it is difficult to find a common ground. After all, any form of handling by any unit is related to past common sense exposure. You must not know how the dinosaur machine did the closing ceremony, do you? He was very happy to hear what he said, but suddenly he stopped. Unique capital is indeed a reason to be proud of. It seems that the steel cable is trying to satisfy the appetite of foreign visitors. Don't sell the lawsuit. Steel lock, just tell me. I can't wait to know. If we could just roar after it's over. Looking up to avoid the mirror light she was looking at. The corners of his mouth couldn't be controlled as he was visibly happy with his current behavior. Even some. Forget yourself behavior. That really feels like the whole body is fresh and refreshed, just like this. Roar. Oh. He forgot to ask her if she wanted to experience the end of the ceremony up close. The steel cable roared at the Cybertron woman who had always been polite to him from outside in front of him. The volume is also very loud, and the breath is dragging out for an extra long time. Oh my goodness, I feel like it's buzzing inside my head. Like being hit by a flea's nest, it makes you forget to run. Not only her, but also the car people present were startled by the sudden roar of the steel cable. Except for the black god who lowered his head to cover himself, all units present were unprepared. I intended not to disturb them for now. As soon as this sound came out, all the units present looked towards this side. The bumblebee saw no movement on the back of the foreign guest and remained motionless as if frightened to death. If we switch this perspective from the perspective of the steel cable, her front is not completely motionless. 
the corners of the smiling mouth twitched, and the gesture remained the raised orchid fingers before the ceremony, silently lowering along with the head sculpture, brim of the hat. The brim of her hat obscured her current expression. Are you angry? Or does it look like a Taoist seeing a ghost and being provoked by it? We don't know about this. But there is one thing, our camera can capture it clearly. Steel cable. The current captain of the Autobots team, Bumblebee, is calling for steel rope. This tone is probably not meant to blame him. Bumblebee, you shouldn't be like this, I thought she was interested. I didn't mean to call her, the emotional response sounded extremely aggrieved. Although I don't quite understand the cultural customs of the dinosaur robot race, whether it's Autobots, Decepticons, or non-denominational behavior of shouting at people, it's all very bad. It's really reckless. Just when car enthusiasts thought that, one person, one dragon, would end the conversation in this way. They heard some unexpected developments. Roar hum hum. Surprisingly, outsiders. Attempting to imitate the behavior of the steel cable just now. But the difference is that she makes a sound towards the ground. The audio produced was also different from the previous violent atmosphere of wanting to tear apart all laws, but rather a very gentle audio. She is well aware that with her own speaker configuration, it is impossible to produce that type of sound. Unless it's playing a long stored audio on the hard drive, that's the roar that real dinosaur machines will have. Dot. Try again to connect to the underground open space. She unleashed the roar of a real dinosaur machine. The aura of tearing apart systems and attempting to break down rules is truly something that ordinary units cannot learn. This is lossless sound quality, I didn't expect a piece of souvenir that was once saved to come in handy now. All units present looked at her due to her behavior. Judging from her current role as a good student, it is possible that she is really interested in the culture of dinosaur machines. So much so that in order to interact with dinosaurs, he had already prepared a super restored lossless audio for himself. Can I imitate it well? The happy ending has come to an end. She lifted her head and humbly asked, like a student, have I done this well? Or perhaps, students are asking their current mentors if they can praise me for my grades. Oh she's really a jerk who can handle the emotions of the audience. You're learning so fast. You're such a genius. Received praise as desired. Actually, even if she doesn't do it, I think Steel Rope will praise her. Although the development of the matter was somewhat unbelievable, I thought she was angry when she lowered her head. It turned out that she was just brewing how to be like a dinosaur. He is really a master of imitation. Genius. Oh my god. She was surprised to cover her mouth when she received the word genius mentioned in praise. Because she never expected that the dinosaur machine would praise her so much. This simple vocabulary has already subverted her inherent impression of dinosaur machines. That's it, surprisingly, these violent processors also have such vocabulary, violence never represents a lack of culture or exposure to new things slash units. Perhaps her thoughts are still a bit rigid. The words of the tightrope changed her inherent view on the category of dinosaur machines. And at this moment, a bold idea is sprouting and spreading among the processors of outsiders. Shouldn't he be very smart, right? Think in your heart, don't neglect the reactions in reality. Otherwise, it would appear very unnatural. The outsider put down their hand that covered their mouth and put it against their chin in a serious and thoughtful manner. I think what you said about steel lock is right. The roar feels great. I feel great. As you described it, the whole body feels very comfortable. I didn't feel averse to shouting at close range, but instead imitated it in a certain way. If it weren't for getting to know each other, but if she were really an interstellar explorer, then I think she could definitely become good friends with steel rope. I like the feeling of destruction, if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have tried this before. I think I'm starting to like the feeling you're saying. I also enjoy the feeling of destruction. They return to their previous mode, 
as if nothing had happened to the little episode just now, and as if they still had something to say. Autobots look at them and also at the steel cables inside. The current situation is that the steel cable has encountered a rare confidant. The bumblebees and horizontal cannons who were watching were both hesitant, considering whether to interrupt the one person, one dragon that was continuing. And without witnessing the entire process of their acquaintance, the black-faced god leaned towards them, because the black-faced god knew that the woman who was in distress in the forest must now need some medical assistance. The black-faced god came to their side and only listened to his probing questions. Two people, no intention of offending, the audio coming from below the knee drills into the audio receiver of the foreign guest. When she heard it, she felt in her heart that it was just the right time, too good, and finally there was a unit to interrupt this long and boring transition. Upon hearing the sound, she lowered her head and looked down at the orange painted mini diamond below with a pair of blue light mirrors. She then looked up at the steel rope in front of her, which was still struggling with the problem just now. Chapter 1 On Earth, Part 2 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. She couldn't think of anything else to say. He has been dragging on the topic of fighting that she just casually mentioned until now, and it's still endless. So let's move on to this for now. For me, not only can it be as you can imagine, but I can also make them feel even more magnificent from dinosaur machines in the future. Steel Cable, don't interrupt me, I don't want spoilers. We're about to talk about the most exciting part. The call to stop failed, indicating that the dinosaur machine is more engaged in this topic than outsiders. The tightrope showed a bit of selflessness again, without even noticing that a new listener had joined him. Outsiders don't want to get used to him anymore when they hear this. It's time to stop, since she can start it, then it can also end. Now is the time to refuse to play. Steel Cable I really don't want to interrupt you, but I have some minor injuries that need to be dealt with, which makes it difficult for me to concentrate. We will discuss later whether to use fists or legs first when fighting enemies. Can you agree? Okay. This is not asking for his opinion. The current situation of outsiders is that they are eager to repair their communication equipment. She provides a reason that can be accepted by the public, hoping that the topic can be paused for a while. Being interrupted suddenly while speaking to the fullest can really make something interesting and boring. The dinosaur machine was a bit annoyed, more of a frustration written on its face. MMM alright, that's why the Decepticons don't want to take the initiative to end the roar just now. Because, isn't that equivalent to giving up the opportunity to have a second interaction with dinosaurs? She needs third-party intervention. I don't want to just say no to the newly established friendly understanding between myself and the dinosaur machine. Seeing the steel rope feeling a bit depressed, she quickly said, we won't wait too long, we can continue later. Avoid actively suggesting any interactions that may reduce favorability, choose to wait, and end your unnecessary needs in a passive manner. In situations where friendly communication is possible, sometimes lowering oneself, giving enough respect, catering to the audience's ideas, and showing enough consideration for the listener, their processor will be as easy to predict and deal with as a juvenile. Who is not a baby yet? The above is the experience she has summarized from the past. She is really a gentle jerk who can make the company happy. I have many more questions I want to ask you. Only you can tell me the answers that a real dinosaur machine will have. I hope you are not busy and still interested in continuing with me as an outsider. Upon hearing the outsider emphasize once again their importance here, the frustration that had been present in the wire rope core was driven away by the generated pleasure. His answer became positive, of course. I'm not busy, that's really great. Both sides achieved satisfactory results at the end. The outsider turned her head to look behind her, bent her knees and legs, and showed a kind smile to the mini King Kong who had been waiting for her for a long time in front of the mirror. Even if squatting down, her model is still tall for the mini King Kong. The mini diamond's grounding wheel turned backwards to prevent the next spring from stretching too far. 
Are you my doctor today? A physician is a respectful term for a doctor. The mini physician, who was called a physician, was certainly delighted to hear this. He gave her the same courtesy. Yes, madam, it's not common for a mini King Kong to become a doctor in Cybertron. I think you must be very outstanding to become a doctor here. The rarity here is described as rare or rare because few units can stand out from it. Your hands look so small, I feel like all my injuries will be healed by your nimble hands. Not only did she dig into the past, but she also described the first impression that the black-faced god gave her. After hearing such words, the black-faced god's face showed an unexpected emotion from the foreign guests, and he became shy. Madam, don't say that, I. I will. The reaction of bowing her head is very cute, and covering her hot face is really shy. It's just that she's already starting to feel embarrassed at this level. It seems that the target chosen this time won't cost her too much saliva, saliva slash electrolyte. Did I say something wrong? I apologize to you. I'm sorry, little one. Proactively apologizing here may seem redundant, but it is logical to do so here, in line with the previously established persona. The volume of each sentence is very low, whispering softly. In the light mirror of the black-faced god, the outsider can only see sincerity and the tenderness of the emotions that cooperate with the words at this moment. It made Blackface wonder if she was the lady who yelled just now. I thought she was the same as the steel lock, so she wasn't. When faced with a small mini Kong like herself, a tall woman would actually choose to squat down with her head down, maintain one knee on the ground during communication, and try to lower her body as much as possible. I think the shyness of the black-faced god is definitely not just about being praised like this. The black-faced god felt pleasantly surprised by the external guests and delighted to receive preferential treatment. Madam, if you say that, I will. Ah. What do you know? Speak up, I'm listening. The audio in the sequel is even more blurry than before, and he is still shy. Quickly lower your head a bit, the face armor is heating up, it's already red and almost emitting hot air. He had already received recognition from the other party before doing anything. He could feel that the other party was a very polite unit towards a mini diamond of his own type. When the black-faced god realized his current behavior and the words he was about to say, he sat there adjusting his suddenly tense emotional module, but his system did not fully comply with his instructions. He just hopes that he cannot be so shy, mature a bit, and be more reserved. Don't drop the chain, okay? But he must admit, the feeling of being recognized by others is really, very good. Okay. Very spirited. This is the first time he has felt a sense of affirmation after losing some of his memories. Um, what's wrong? Is there anything uncomfortable? Without a reply for a few seconds, I just sat there and didn't do anything. She saw him constantly covering his face and not daring to look at herself, so she wondered if he was too close to him, which scared him a bit. She asked the black-faced god with concern, because she was still counting on him to repair herself. But if he doesn't speak after asking. Then wait. Anyway, outsiders believe that other Autobots present will not allow this situation to persist for too long. I will do my best, just as I thought of this, I saw him put down his hands to cover his face. The black-faced god has adjusted his emotions and, with a doctor's serious and responsible attitude towards patients, placed one hand in front of his breastplate to reciprocate her respect in this regard. Madam, please follow me. Okay, then I'll trouble you. Follow the lead of the black-faced god. Her facial emotions remained calm on the surface, little did she know that what her inner core was thinking at this moment was completely opposite. It's really a waste of time. If it were in the past, no one would dare to neglect me like this. Treading on you would be cheap for you. What a arrogant inner monologue. Black-faced gods cannot read chips, and similarly, there are no units here that can read chips. The black-faced god leads the way ahead, only focused on suppressing the joy in his heart. He brought this outsider to the command center. 
Invite her to sit down on a makeshift table just now for the convenience of future treatment. This platform is built steadily and won't collapse no matter how it is shaken. As soon as the chassis sat down, black-faced God became busy searching for tools to pry open the lid in the toolbox on the nearby platform. He needs to help her first investigate whether this is an external damage or an internal damage. If it's internal, that may be quite troublesome to handle. I don't know how to address you yet, doctor. As soon as she sat down, she habitually crossed her legs and looked around, only to find that there were still many things placed on the keyboard in the command center. Looking towards the black-faced god. The black-faced god was facing her with his back, answering in this way, just call me the black-faced god, or you can call me a savior. Hello black-faced god, my name is Z891, she also said her own name. They exchanged each other's names just now, nice to meet you, Ms. Z891. I'm about to start now, please turn off the perception in this area first. Hmm. I'll follow your arrangements. The black-faced god arrived at the lifting platform next to her seat and began to pry open the cover to check the external wiring. Since the lid was pried, there has been no dialogue between them, only between the doctor and the injured, which is so ordinary that you can ask and answer. Are both the left and right sides broken? Mm, yes, this is the first time I've seen this model, don't believe it, the production time of this accessory may not be earlier than the launch time of everyone present. I'm really glad that our Ms. Z891 has an ageless childlike appearance. That's really good it's very suitable for this kind of job, such as being a double dot sided spy. It's old. I've been used to it and haven't changed it since then. You put in the chip, no matter what model it is, I will fix it for you. I believe in your black-faced god, with the joint efforts of both parties, black-faced god quickly identified the cause and repaired her communication equipment. The accessories of the old model are not very sophisticated, they are just the most basic model, and there are not many things to pay attention to, so there is nothing fancy to pay attention to. Faster than I expected, the repair time is faster than she imagined. I hope she has timely forgotten the idea of crushing the medical officer due to efficiency. Try to see if it works, based on current technology, it is really difficult for portable devices to ensure signal connection at such a long distance. In the words of the indigenous people of Blue Star, it means not on the server. But if her companion is local to the Blue Star instead of crossing galaxies, then it should be possible. Well, I'll give it a try, sitting on the platform just now, she closed her light mirror and put on a dedicated and determined look. What the black-faced god was looking forward to was that she wrinkled the pair of metal eyebrows on her face. Maybe their signal is not good. Without questioning the doctor's skills, she tactfully shifted the blame onto her distant companion. If my companion knows, thank her for the assembly line. Because she didn't contact any units earlier. The black-faced god listened and only attributed the reason for not being able to connect to his own negligence. And I hope she can let herself try again. Let me help you check again. It's not your problem not to be able to contact them, I believe you. Doctor, I'm sure you've fixed me. It's okay. Really. There is no doubt in the current response, only trust. She respects herself so much when she first meets. The afterglow of the sunset on her back spilled onto the table, enveloping her body in the warm radiance of the sun. All the units present felt that her words and aura at this moment were really warm. I should thank you. Thank you for fixing me, blackface god. If the kind-hearted godmother that Russell, a native human boy of Blue Star, said in his memory, would be supported by the children in the church really exists, then it should be like her. The sight visible from looking up made the focus of the black-faced god a bit hazy. Faced with this scene, he had nothing left in his heart except for being moved. If it weren't for the foreign guests calling him, he might have been able to indulge in this natural atmosphere for a while longer. Is there anything behind me? No. There's nothing, an unexpected expression appeared on the face of the black-faced god. 
She only felt a warm sensation on her back and didn't care if it was natural lighting up her background. Grasping the tools in hand, the black-faced god's expression was somewhat flustered. To conceal his wild thoughts, he turned around and said no. Step down from the lifting platform, turn your back to the unit on the platform, and start organizing the other tools in the toolbox. But she can't pretend that the gaze just now didn't happen. Just as the black-faced god stepped down, she suddenly turned back and looked behind her. I thought I was discovered. Did the black-faced god just pay attention to the time of this planet? The scenery of blue stars will change over time, such as plants and the color of the sky. During her time following his majesty, she already knew most of the common sense on this planet. It's getting dark outside. Another bad idea emerged from her processor, like seeds sprouting, spreading and weaving a complete information tree. I need to find a way to make them keep me, the afterglow on the horizon gradually darkened in color. The sun is setting and it will soon get dark. As night fell, all the lighting systems belonging to the waste disposal plant were turned on. Chapter 1 On Earth, Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Under the light of the roof beam, the repaired outsider begged them not to let themselves leave now. He said he couldn't contact his companions and was very afraid of the furry beasts he had seen during the day in the forest outside. I tried to contact, but I couldn't get in touch. Feeling a little worried, he put his hand on the communication device next to his head and tried again. I don't know what kind of emotions she had when she said these words. Anyway, she pretended to be quite decent, like a friend dropping a chain during a critical moment. Can I stay? Just one day, just one night. Even if she doesn't, I don't think the car people would be cruel enough to let her stay overnight in a forest where danger could occur at any time. Don't forget that there are still many Decepticons on Blue Star. You're not as cruel as us when you put the chip on. The person who said this was the hot-hearted girl who appeared to have a cold personality during the day, but actually called a doctor for her and helped build a temporary medical station in an area not visible to the camera. She was an ironclad police officer. Thank you, thank you so much. Upon hearing this, she lowered her head and placed her hands together on her chest, tapping lightly. Sheen Lee is really grateful that they allowed me to stay here for the night. Actually, you can stay here until you contact your companions. It's so dangerous outside that we can't drive you away. Although it was just a one-dot-sided encounter, her words and actions are all telling the outside world that she is a very easy-dot-going and cultured unit. Just getting to know her in half a day made almost all the units here like her, which is why they are willing to receive her. The purpose of saying Bumblebee's words may not be pure. Do you want to try her reaction? Before she could reply, the Iron Fist's present couldn't sit still. But Lieutenant, you have to keep her going. Always. Doesn't that mean getting an innocent unit involved in their mission to capture Decepticon fugitives? This decision seems too dangerous to anyone. Seeing that the Iron Wrist wanted to stop, the horizontal cannon beside him followed closely and joined in. I don't know if Xiao Hong wants to take the opportunity to add some new interactive emotions with Xiao Lan. For example, the rapid generation of emotional thinking such as urgency. Transferring through the fibers to individual terminals is so fast that it doesn't even require a second. Yes, it's always possible. Horizontal Canon They, Little Blue and Little Red, seem to enjoy arguing, maybe they have become accustomed to this situation and even the bumblebee has not stopped them. Faced with such an invitation, the foreign guests are a bit unsure how to thank them. She is too happy. You guys are really great. Then I'll disturb you in Bowdy. Look at my memory. Too many things happen during the day and I forget to introduce myself. My name is Z891. Tap your own heart, as if calming the joy beneath it. Perhaps it was because of the interaction between Xiao Hong and Xiao Lan that her response slowed down a bit. And at that moment, the bumblebee remembered what she had said before. She is a member of a research group. What kind of vehicle did she and her classmates come here in? 
it's impossible for him to fly over by himself. If it is true, then her vehicle form will definitely not be a common model. Can you please tell us what vehicle you came here on? Z891 inch the bumblebee raised this question because he was indeed a bit curious. The foreign guest being asked is certainly aware that if they want to spend a smooth night here, then this is a question that cannot be politely or politely answered. Be cautious, if you don't answer well, it's just a proposition. It's an ordinary spaceship, what model is it? The models are divided into civilian and military. Maybe even after listening to her, Bumblebee can still provide precise parameters for the corresponding model. I don't remember the model very clearly, but it should be an old version. It seems like there are some years, as the classmate who brought me said. State the lines she had planned one by one, and she had already prepared them when she was in the forest. Upon hearing her Chen statement, the Bumblebee did not inquire further, most likely believing it, and there was also no need to inquire further. Um, wait a minute. Have outsiders forgotten their previous identities, including fans of Bumblebee? How could she speak so coldly to her idol, or to put it another way, calm? Wishing you a speedy contact with them, my idol blesses me. Thank you, Bumblebee. With your blessings, I will definitely do it. Switching from a refined student to a passionate fan made the units present think that her previous inquiries and calm statements from Xiaoxin were just a pretense of being reserved when facing idols. When blessed, her reserve was thrown into the clouds. All right, it's the end of the stage now, actors who have been tired all day should take a break. Everyone, please rest early. Tomorrow we will continue to search for other areas. All the units present have been tired for a day. Bumblebee asks everyone to rest. Because having the spirit is the key to welcoming a new day in a few hours. Where does she sleep then? Yes, they agreed to let her stay. The silent steel lock just now reminds everyone that we haven't arranged a resting area for this foreign guest yet. The Bumblebee was thinking when it heard an outsider say. Just have enough space for me to lie down. It's not because she's not a girl with a cleanliness obsession, but because she understands that they live in such a shabby environment. Even the previous countertops were temporarily built using materials from this planet. So there's no need to ask about the charging bed, it's definitely not there. She doesn't need to say anything offensive. That would be unfair to you. Tomorrow morning, I will free up a parking space for you. Are you here in person? I can boast about this matter for a lifetime when I go back. Her reaction was quite lively when she heard the great hero move the parking space. Are you sure you're not thinking about becoming a police officer even if you're a hero? However, for the bad guys, bringing this up can indeed make them the focus of the dinner party. If she can go back. For the sake of environmental protection and energy conservation, all the lights in the waste disposal plant are turned off. The sky above is getting darker and everyone is sleeping to recharge. At the same time, the outsiders lay flat on the dry Mother Earth. Opening the light mirror, the dark optical mirror lit up a dim light, and she looked at the moon that was sometimes exposed and covered by clouds. The ancient people who seemed to be learning blue stars looked at the bright moon, unsure if they were homesick or contemplating their next steps. There was no other unit around her, she was lying down with her legs crossed. Although Mother Earth is good, she can sleep directly, but her back really hurts. Foreign guests lie flat on the open space between the two shelves, as this is their own bed. The gap in this area is more spacious compared to the width between other shelves here. Autobots are really good at finding a place, it must be a rough sleeping unit that can have enough space to move around here, so as not to kick down the carefully arranged shelves of the waste factory owner with just one flip. It's time, the inner core thinks so. Lie there until the clouds in the sky are thick enough to block the light of the moon. She just sat up, her movements light, her steps moving slowly. Where are you? Let me find it, I can't see my figure clearly in the dark, only a pair of brown halos swimming between the shelves. For her, the night really covered a natural protective layer for her actions. 
The night vision function of optical equipment is already ready to be in place when the lights are turned off, and she has enough time for the system to slowly adapt to the dark environment until it is turned on to the best and clearest state. There is a saying in Blue Star called, Black Moon and High Wind, Murder Night, which means that the environment is dangerous, killing people in the night when they can't see their hands. She dreamed of killing him in the past nights. It seems that today, she can come to an end to what happened many years ago in his sleep. Dang, during the movement, the core kicked something. Just now, you mentioned murder night. The appearance of this sound really disrupts the atmosphere. Fortunately, the impact sound is not loud. Otherwise, she would lie and say that her actions were just to go out and find a good angle to capture the beauty of the moon sky. Focusing on the direction of grounding, I saw that what I had just kicked was actually the dinosaur machine from the day. She was startled in her heart. The steel lock blocks the walking path between the shelves. I remember she even shook hands with the tightrope during the day. Faced with such a situation, where she could choose to take a detour, she actually stepped over directly from above. Still reciting in my heart, sleeping so soundly. Forget about him, she looked at her hand and decided to let him go for now. The steel cable was left behind, and he couldn't affect himself temporarily. In the dim night without the bright moon, in stark contrast to the white painted palms, even though they cannot reflect sharp light, it cannot change the fact that these hands have pulled out countless targets and sparks. The foreign guest's finger joint module, only the front section is black and flat in shape, the black part resembles tweezers, the remaining segments are white rectangular columns. This shape is not specially prepared for friendliness. The process of searching went round and round, avoiding detours and taking small steps. I found this place quite large. Walking is also a tiring task, but don't lose the energy to seek revenge before you find it. His mother earth is really big. So there it is. Heart is cursing in displeasure. Hard work pays off to those who have a heart. After several searches, she finally found the yellow car that she had been thinking about at the right front end of a shelf. Stopped under the rain shelter not far ahead. Who's there? Years of hatred are finally coming to an end. Just as she thought she could finally achieve her wish, two straight beams of light suddenly shone on her mirror, also shining on her body. The light completely deprived the body that was originally hidden in the darkness of its natural cover. She was exposed. The bright light of the piercing mirror shone brightly, and she reached forward to block it. The sensitivity of the light mirror is automatically adjusted, allowing her to see clearly that the light source comes from the horizontal cannon. Why is the horizontal cannon here? How should she make a reasonable explanation for her appearance here? Chapter 1 On Earth, Part 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Don't be nervous. It's me, Z891 inch with her index finger to her mouth, she deliberately lowered the volume of the audio. Are you sure this tone is not imitating the fugitive student who was hit by a familiar security guard's flashlight? Why are you here without charging at night? Her appearance made Hung Pao feel suspicious. In the impression of Hung Pao, except for being on duty according to the shift schedule, night watch, all units in the waste factory should have entered the charging state a few hours ago. When did their vigil start? In fact, it has been proposed by Bumblebee since their first day here. At first, this arrangement was agreed upon by all members of the team. After implementing it for a period of time, some units in the team felt that the existence of the night watch was a bit unnecessary because they had never encountered any unexpected situations. The emergence of hidden objections is due to the need to still arrange a night watch in the waste factory filled with defense systems, or because every night they have spent so long here has been nothing. I think there should be some edges on both sides of this. And this hidden dissenting idea suddenly disappeared just now. Because of the horizontal cannon, he was very certain that he had just seen a tall black figure that moved without any movement. Finally, I am certain that the support of the bumblebee is absolutely right. 
I thought there were Decepticons sneaking in at night to launch a night raid. But now the shadow illuminated by his car headlights in front of the mirror is the Cybertron woman they received during the day, who was brought back from the forest by the Hornet. Seeing her walking towards her, the horizontal cannon withdrew from the vehicle form. The changes in the shape of the bearings and the vehicle body emit a sound of mechanical operation. I only heard foreign guests suggest to Hung Pao like this, let's talk about it over there. Don't wake them up, they all look very tired. Okay, you're making some sense. I hope you can explain it clearly. The foreign guest's finger points towards the west. Hung Pao followed the foreign guests to the wall on the west side of the waste dump. No one leaned against this corner to rest, as it was almost filled with collectibles from the owner of the waste factory. The orange squirrels produced during the day are also here. Their steps point towards the west, and the light mirror looks towards the west. Similarly, none of them seem to have noticed the blue police car following behind them, hiding behind the shelf with only a little protruding front end. Now let's take a look at how outsiders defend themselves. Please listen to my explanation. No, please listen to my sophistry. Our study group also has the habit of arranging a night watch during camping. Isn't this when I heard Bumblebee say there are Decepticons during the day? I'm a bit overwhelmed. Let's take a look around and see if there's anything I can do to worry about. Because of the established habits and the information received during the day, it is impossible to rest peacefully. It is indeed a reasonable explanation. Mr. Hung Pao, who are you? We also have this arrangement here, that's a wise arrangement. Was it arranged by the bumblebee? Units with camping experience in the wilderness will not be unfamiliar with this process. Outsiders knowingly ask questions. Even Hung Pao could imagine that as soon as he admitted it, the fans of the bumblebee in front of him would definitely seize the opportunity to boast about his idol. Um, yes, truly deserving of being a bumblebee. Just as reliable as the captain of our team. This is a shrewd decision. Fortunately, I walked to a relatively quiet place. Otherwise, with this sound, Hung Pao thought it would surely wake up some crazy police officer in the waste factory. Do you guys stay up all night without lights on? After expressing her approval to her idol, Hung Pao raised her own question. Faced with such a problem, outsiders do not want to admit that their body has nothing else to emit light except for the light mirror and some seam energy cables. You didn't misread the description in this paragraph, she didn't have a light bulb installed on her body. Hmm. Yes. Take a moment off the stage to develop a habit. She answered the horizontal cannon with a very serious tone. Yes, we don't turn on the lights because, turning on the lighting will make the units that sneak in escape. So the deputy captain of our team asked us to patrol at night without turning on the lighting. This way, we can catch the units that come in and cause trouble, and give them the education they deserve. I mean, send them to the police station. We can't take advantage of the bad guys, can't we? Capture the units that come in to steal homes and provide them with the education they deserve. It does sound like a very soothing idea. Bad units should be punished. But at least it should also be combined with current events. Now it can be on Earth. The only enemy we face is the Decepticons. Decepticons are not that easy to deal with, should your vice captain be replaced. To bring the bad guys to justice, let your team members take personal risks. No matter how I think about it, I don't think a responsible unit would come up with a solution. Her description made Yoko feel that her deputy captain was definitely a very unreliable guy who loves to show off. Hun Pao believes it is necessary to remind this polite and well-behaved lady that your deputy captain is not qualified, so don't be fooled by the deputy captain's ideas one day. The situation that Hun Pao imagined at this moment was not the same as what she had imagined. Their conversation now has some cross-channel chat meaning, it may seem like saying something, but in reality, three sticks cannot hit it. I never thought about these things. 
the two-second pause was only to extinguish the anger of the inner core that had just seen Mars, and also changed the newly generated, you said bad things about my popo dad, in the core to something I had never thought about before, the captain sometimes says he's not thoughtful. Sometimes we sound the horn for help. The handling here is quite impressive, it seems that her captain is much more reliable than the deputy captain. The outsider pushed the contradiction in their own language onto units that Heng Pao had never seen before, which can be said to have left them clean. After this answer, Heng Pao did not immediately say the next sentence. He suddenly raised his hand and covered his mouth. Because he realized that the pause and low mood of the other party earlier might be due to what he just said about the unit she cares about, right? It's over. I made the lady unhappy. What should I say next so that there won't be any problems? What else can we say? I don't know. Why don't we apologize first? Um. Did I say the wrong thing just now? Actually, he doesn't either. Sometimes his ideas are a bit unrealistic for me. At least they're not suitable for me to do. It seems that this obviously incorrect theory has successfully shifted and ended the current topic. Foreign guests saw his reaction and decided to give him a step down to start a new topic. Mr. Hengpao, you look a bit tired. Why don't you leave the night watch to me? I often do this. If Heng Pao just said those thoughtless words because his thinking nerves were not online, then she can provide him with a step down. Because there was no need for anyone to have any unpleasantness before that, the thoughts of outsiders were like this. Although I do. I mean, this is a task assigned to me by the bumblebee. You are truly diligent and responsible. There are fewer units like you now. That's not to say. Who is not a baby yet? Everyone likes to listen to good words. Hung Pao's current emotional response reminded her of dinosaurs during the day. There is a saying that goes without saying it properly. There seems to be a kind of magic on the outsider, a kind of magic that makes all units like her. I don't think anyone would be unhappy to have a friendly acquaintance with her. Although it is currently uncertain what the character of Hung Pao is, Simply praising it and expressing one's desire to use it as a role model for learning can ultimately win some favor. I think I should learn this from you, it's a great virtue. Even if the current unit is a troublemaker who has achieved nothing. Ha believe me, no matter who the other person is, as long as they have a purpose, including engaging in communication with them, she will always say it without fail, be as proficient as an endorsement, remember every key point in it. No unit dislikes being trusted and recognized, and no unit dislikes being looked up to after enjoying respect. She has become accustomed to using this method to win the favor of others during her past tasks, and has never failed before actively exposing herself. It's not as you said. It's actually nothing. Suppressing facial emotional expression is a difficult task, and the suppressor must be aware of its existence and suppress it before it is about to surface. Of course, foreign visitors are aware of the language involved in the gesture of touching the back and then turning the face of the horizontal cannon. Understanding these body language is no different from being able to read the heart, and such a description is not an exaggeration. Hung Pao was a bit embarrassed by her frank praise. I'm almost laughing myself, it's really embarrassing. Even prickly kids can feel embarrassed. Hung you'll have to share it with Popo's dad when you go back. He'll enjoy listening to cold jokes. It seems that outsiders may enjoy cold jokes for no reason. This scene was seen in the mirror, and she couldn't wait to share what happened today with many of her companions. The reason why the emotions of foreign guests can be so freely controlled is because of the group she was in before being imprisoned there are strict requirements for the management of facial emotions among team members. Of course, not every team member must have this skill. Only those who are good dot looking or attractive and have the responsibility of receiving guests need to learn this. Restrain oneself from observing the other party, pretend to have two sets of processing terminals, and truly have such precise computing power. Taking advantage of this gap, the outsider looked at the text on the outer armor of the horizontal cannon. 
I think it's time to end the one dot sided agreement and praise with just a small chat, and quickly change the topic, change to a sustained topic. Every unit that has received training in a group knows that a short and endless cycle depends on the timing, otherwise the audience will quickly become bored. I have already used this for bumblebees this morning. She doesn't really like to repeat the same process, and every unit has to be treated accordingly. You should know that laziness can increase the risk of exposure. Besides, the effect of constantly praising is not as good as the sustained effect of interests and hobbies. Don't be modest. Oh, this word means you love racing and sports. Yeah, what's going on? What a cool hobby. Speaking of which, I miss my friends a bit. They also enjoy sports and sports. I remember there was a time when they often reported to the police because of this. The emergence of shared interests can lead to eight out of nine like dot-minded individuals voluntarily taking down their guard or developing a desire to discuss with each other. And if this hobby is not a hot topic, then it's a different story. Upon hearing her description, Hung Pao thought they were talking about the same form of entertainment now, so he smiled and said, really, then your friend might know Iron Wrist, or I think so. You're really good at joking with Mr. Yokohama. Maybe I even saw you on my way to bail them out before, what can be said should be said, but what cannot be said should be kept in the heart. This is a basic literacy. Not to mention it, maybe the companions of the foreign guests have actually met them. That guy named Iron Wrist should be an intern police officer, right? Outsiders have come to this conclusion when they see Iron Wrists in the forest. Now, she is more certain that her intuition is not wrong. Seeing them talking and laughing, the bumblebee and Iron Wrist stopped by the nearby shelf to peek at their every move, and lightly left the cover in front of them. Is it the suspicious behavior of outsiders that makes them follow here? The answer is yes. But now it seems that there is nothing suspicious about her. Your smile is too low, isn't it? But. Ha I really want to know what Iron Wrist would look like if she knew I said that to her. Starting from saying, you really know how to laugh at Mr. Hung Pao, the foreign guests would bend over, cover their mouths, and laugh non-stop. As soon as she heard Hung Pao talk about iron fists, she quickly stopped laughing and raised her hand to wipe the cleaning liquid that spilled from the corners of the mirror's eyes. Don't make her angry, it would be better not to ask her. Are you afraid of her? No. She helped me today. What? Is this called clear division of gratitude and resentment? I hope she won't harm any units here except for Bumblebee. Their topic came to an end in ten minutes, and the shift change happened to be at the last second. Comma, what sound? My alarm clock is ringing, Blue Star has a modern saying that goes, I don't work hard and my mind is faulty. The built that I an alarm clock of the horizontal cannon rang, and he signaled for a shift change. He walked towards the nearby carport and woke up Iron Wrist under the carport. With an Iron Wrist that looked like it had just woken up, he made a hash and asked, Ha, is it already time? Yes, it's already time, Big Lazy Bone. Iron Wrist exits the car model and walks out of the parking space. The horizontal cannon changes into a car shape and stops to sleep. I don't know if he likes to make Iron Fist angry or doesn't like Iron Fist, but his attitude towards the two ladies is completely different when bidding farewell. Good night then, Z891, hmm good night, he even reached out of the car window and waved his hand towards the outside, making a gesture of, I'm about to leave, wish me a smooth journey, indicating that he is about to embark on a journey of nighttime dreams. The outsider saw him and felt that he had a great sense of humor. It's really lively. Seeing him makes me feel a bit tempted to play, there are many units in which outsiders have good relationships and get along well in groups. The fun-filled behavior of Hung Pao just now reminded her of a young boy inside, who has always been very energetic when playing. Iron wrist stretched lazily, rubbing the mirror. When you see an outsider here, just ask her, why are you here? Even though he knew the reason, he still asked with an iron fist. She shouldn't have noticed her actions with the bumblebee just now. Good evening, 
officer. I'm a bit bedridden and can't sleep well. I just chatted with Mr. Hengpao. It was me who led the conversation. The horizontal cannon is sleeping right next to it. She took the initiative to block the responsibility, but didn't want to be seen as intentionally slacking off. Anyway, Iron Fist and Bumblebee have already discovered this, just pretend to be themselves. Recognize the bed. Hmm. But I will overcome this in the future. No matter how much the unit recognizes the bed, it will yield on the bed in the training dormitory. When tired, I will sleep, but I will sleep hard until the sky and the earth are dim, and the sun and moon are chaotic. It wasn't until the instructor's whistle blew that the soldiers remembered that they had recognized the bed. It's not affectation, but the mechanism hasn't adapted to the environment yet. Any unit will have this process, and I believe the Autobots team will also have this situation on their first night on Earth. Upon hearing about recognizing the bed, Iron Wrist couldn't help but think of the day he first came to Earth. I also remembered the words she said in the morning. I remember you said you were a fan of Bumblebee. Outsiders may not know that Iron Fist is actually a fan of Bumblebee, and Iron Fist takes Bumblebee as a role model to learn from. She vaguely remembers the first time she saw the Bumblebee, and the scene was no different from the behavior of an outsider in the waste factory during the day. Please be cautious about this. I am a rational fan, I was just a little excited earlier. Rational fans, Iron Wrist deliberately repeated the rational fan. You say you are a rational fan, but your appearance during the day doesn't look like anything at all. Hmm. Because of me. When outsiders speak, they look at the iron wrist, and when they pause, they look down at the land they are touching underground. Iron wrists heard her explain for themselves like this. To be honest, I never expected to have the day when I could see him after the war. The moon shone out from the dark clouds. She said, looking up at the newly bright night sky in the sky. The light of the bright moon shines on her hat brim and is seen in her mirror of light. The hazy color is a bright layer called gray on top of the black dots in the mirror socket. I never thought that one day my wish would come true. It seems like a dim life has welcomed its own light and liberation today, finally encountering that unique unit that can liberate one's obsession. Looking at the bright moon in the sky, her hands clasped, she still remembers clearly. Team the cheerful big boy with a female name always prays to the moonlight, hoping to see his sister who disappeared during the war soon. Maria, perhaps you are right, praying to the moonlight to really see the unit you want to see, I don't know if I finally realized how difficult it is to meet, or if it's just a one-dot-sided self-emotion, it is at this moment that I have the opportunity to redeem and liberate myself. There is light at the end of the tunnel. She took a deep breath into the sky, accelerating the built that I end cooling fan blades to work, and clasped her fingers tightly to pray to the bright moon in the sky. The ancient people of Blue Star said that the moon has ups and downs. May there be a day when we will no longer wander and wander. From calmness to interlocking fingers, to deep breaths suppressing inner excitement, and then to teary droplets in the open mirror light. Her sadness over His Majesty's departure was perceived by Iron Fist as a touching moment for fans to see their idols, that is an emotion that cannot be suppressed and overflowed. Are you okay? Iron Wrist saw her mood change and asked her if she was okay. I want to shut her down. But she expressed that, I'm a bit tired, officer. I'll go back first, and you'll have to work hard in the second half of the night. The speaker's audio was a bit shaky. Sadness is the most difficult emotion for her to conceal, far more difficult to restrain than anger. As long as she thinks that Her Majesty has been left here, and she doesn't know where that silver lamp has been forgotten, she can't control her sadness and longing for the past and embarking on a journey. The empathy ability between same-dot-sex individuals is very strong, which only includes a very small fault tolerance rate. Iron Fisted, seeing that she had already rejected his kindness, withdrew the emotions he wanted to express and no longer asked her too much. Oh no, this. It's not really hard, this is what I should do. I'll go back first. 
Good night. Good night, their conversation came to an end when the bright moon was once again blocked by clouds. A few hours later, the blue star welcomed a new morning. Chapter 1 On Earth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Last night, almost all units in the waste factory slept soundly. When morning comes, it happens to be the time when the car people distribute energy supplies. After waking up, go to the command center as usual to gather with everyone. Upon hearing the words of the bumblebee, he ran to bring in the outsiders as well. The location of the foreign guest is near the shelf where he woke up. The steel cable followed the scent and found its position. When it saw her, it was eager to go in and wake her up. Take a step forward. As soon as he walked into the shadow of the shelf, a familiar scene suddenly appeared on Shinto, prompting him to step back and knock on the door, imitating the way Xiao Luo Rust wakes up his father. Note. In the leader's challenge manga, Xiao Luo Rust is Danny's nickname for his son Russell. Bang Bang, civilized and polite. Both Cybertron and Blue Star have such etiquette. The dinosaur's knuckles tapped on the shelves, making a clanging sound. The outsider heard the sound and quickly sat up from the ground, sleeping all night until her bones hurt. It can be said that I haven't slept much. Hey buddy, how was your rest last night? Stand straight and stretch lazily. At this moment, the outsider happened to be with their back to the tightrope, and they were lost in sleep, still wondering where the tightrope had gone. I just heard the sound and quickly turned around to change direction. It turned out he was behind me. Oh, it's you. Good morning, Steel Rope. A lively greeting, it looks like she slept very well last night. He explained his intention to her. Good morning. Bumblebee asked me to gather you. Okay, let's go then, the tightrope turned in front of her, and her mirror noticed the mark on the tightrope's shoulder. Quickly turn your head to confirm the surrounding environment and confirm that the bumblebees are far away. There were no other units following steel rope, so she felt it was a suitable time to ask about the steel rope logo. There are no shackles on being in the camp of the Autobots. It's very suspicious. She needs an explanation, otherwise she will continue to doubt. Steel Cable Can you explain your logo? Just lifted my leg and prepared to walk. Upon hearing this cold sentence, is it my friend whom I only made yesterday who is doubting me? The tightrope turned around and turned back to look at her. Explain your situation to her. He doesn't want his good friend to say no, he will tell the truth. I didn't pay attention before. I made some mistakes. But now I have corrected them. His large physique always makes him unintentionally do things wrong, such as turning his body and tail to hit others, walking without looking at his feet to step on someone, or valuable items belonging to others. The audio emotion of the tightrope contains apologies, as it is indeed not a glorious thing. I even speak with my head down. He only hopes that outsiders won't stop playing with him because of this. So what is your current state? The bumblebee said I'm on probation now. The meaning of probation is that if the offender's criminal circumstances and repentance attitude meet the conditions for probation, they can avoid imprisonment. The outsider didn't quite believe in the statement made by Steel Rope. Her disbelief has nothing to do with the discriminatory remarks about the emblem worn by the tightrope, as she herself is involved in it. She believed that the reason why Steel Rope said this was because he was afraid of the Autobots monitoring his every move. She is well aware that there are surveillance cameras everywhere, and also knows how some auxiliary police officers in her hometown handle law enforcement of not only that, but in times of peace, some places use non-violent means to control prisoners, such as reducing consumables, forcing prisoners who have nowhere to escape to voluntarily choose the soft knife of compromise. Did they treat you well during the probation period? She only cares about this now. The shelf is not full. Before asking this question, she specifically looked at the bumblebees across the shelf. Make sure no one is staring here before turning back to face the steel cable. They are very kind to me, I believe what you said. It's okay, 
I still treat you as my friend. The past development is not hindering the present. After speaking. With a faint smile on her face, she once again reached out her hand to the same unit in front of her. The steel cable held on to her without hesitation, and both of them were grateful to each other for saying these things. Afterwards, Steel Rope led her to the command center to meet up with other Autobots. Autobots have the same amount of energy allocated to her. Is it for me? Thank you. She received food here. Why don't you have food? Only when you are full can you have the strength to seek revenge. After receiving energy, the outsider found a clean seat and occasionally looked up at the nearby steel cable. The amount received by the steel cable was the same as the amount they received, and she was very skeptical that eating such a small amount of steel cable would make her hungry. The answer is definitely yes. The shape of the wire rope is much wider than hers. It's not easy to live under someone else's protection. For you, it's like this, the appetite of the foreign guests is not large, and the portion given to her by the Autobots can only provide her with enough satiety to barely support herself for a day, she didn't know that this place would provide two meals of supplies a day, but it's okay, she can use as much as she wants when she goes back. She has stored a lot of energy blocks in her cave, thanks to her previous work experience on warships. After dinner, I saw them sitting around discussing the arrangements for today's patrol members. The foreign guests rushed over and said they wanted to help. Autobots did not refuse her kindness when they heard that she wanted to help, but the premise was that they would not let her act alone, claiming it was for her safety. Due to foreign visitors actively joining the daily essential patrols, there have been some changes in their member arrangements. The originally prepared pairwise pairing has become a pairwise pairing. Iron wrist and steel cable, Z891 and Horizontal Cannon, a member of the Bumblebee. They can complete the inspection work for three routes simultaneously today, which is undoubtedly a decision to reduce workload in the future. But this arrangement makes it difficult not to doubt whether the Bumblebee is a bit inflated. Do you have any questions about division of labor? It's not just random to make such arrangements. Bumblebees have a certain basis for making such decisions. Hung Pao and Iron Fist always argue, and the performance of Z891 and Steel Lock yesterday was too focused. The Bumblebee is very worried that the Steel Lock and Z891 will forget the patrol task when they are together, so they will disrupt the order. Similarly, for the safety of other team members, Bumblebee will not let them act alone. I am a reconnaissance soldier during the war, and it is difficult for me to deal with a few ordinary criminals. Lieutenant, I know you shouldn't question it, but is it too dangerous for you to do this? The safety of the iron wrist carrying the core bumblebee. The same goes for outsiders. Speaking of which. Ah, uh, audience master, have you ever heard of the cheers? Don't say that, officer. I believe Lieutenant Bumblebee can do it. He's a great hero who saved Cybertron. He definitely has no problem dealing with a few Decepticons. But, Z891 is right, our support is redundant. Too many positive reviews may not necessarily be a good thing. The picture of poverty and the dagger of death, gentlemen. It seems that the red and blue classmates are about to start again. The bumblebee coughed lightly to stop them. Not all units here are like us, so don't let our guests laugh. All right. Everyone, get ready. We're going to leave now. He really sounded like a leader when he said that. Although he was originally the captain of this team. Everyone noticed the smile on the bumblebee's face at this moment. He is happy at this moment, not only because of his past history, but also because he is not questioned. The feeling of being trusted and regarded as a spiritual pillar will make anyone happy. His fans turned their backs after giving him these positive affirmations. She is now going to go find the black-faced god to do the final check on her body, and it has been confirmed that everything is ready. When leaving, the curve raised at the corner of the foreign guest's mouth was not noticed by any unit present. I'll trouble you, doctor. Please perform a pre-departure examination for me. 
When she saw the black-faced god, her condition was still the same as yesterday. Following the instructions of the black-faced god, she sat down on the table again and enjoyed free medical service support. Everything is going smoothly than I imagined. I thought it would take at least a few days to hide. I didn't expect that such progress would be like heaven watching over her. The doctor's gentle technique almost made her think of kidnapping him. All right. Z891, based on the data, your body is very healthy both inside and outside. Black-faced God knows a lot of things, and his knowledge base includes not only basic operating manuals for various instruments, but also a wealth of medical-related documents. Checking is something that he can do just by typing on the keyboard. Remember that hospital registration is also divided into internal medicine and surgery. In fact, as long as there are instruments around, scanning and inspection are just a matter of minutes. You should know that some wealthy individuals build hospitals in their homes, and the number of equipment and honorary certificates belonging to doctors is even greater than that of public hospitals, right? Thank you, doctor. If it weren't for her urgent need to draw her own period, the efficiency of Jaime and Shin's work would have made outsiders want to stay and praise him a few more words. I have to go now, Hun Pao is still waiting for me. Let's go I wish you a pleasant day too, doctor. Like the rising sun, what a vibrant and youthful audio. She ran around without forgetting to turn back and wave goodbye, leaving the black-faced god in the command center still in place. She said things that didn't matter to herself, but didn't care. Her words had such a strong infectious and penetrating power. She followed the horizontal cannon and left the Autobots camp, Waste Factory. The black-faced god was pleased with that title and covered his mouth and chuckled after she left. This scene happened to be seen by the bumblebee. Oh hee hee, Dr. Hee hee, what's so happy about? Black-faced god. It's nothing. He quickly stopped his behavior. Who is still thinking in my heart? Looking back, it turned out to be a bumblebee. The black-faced god thought that the bumblebee had already set off with the iron wrist wire rope. Perhaps it was the bumblebee who stayed with the black-faced god and outsiders, so they didn't rush to leave, right? If there is any unexpected situation encountered during the routine inspection, bumblebee is a good helper at critical times. By the way, bumblebee, I just realized that the hibernation pod next to the wall is missing one. But I found it outside the waste dump. Maybe I remembered the wrong location. I can't move it. Can you help me? Of course, did you remember the wrong location? Is it really like this? At least we can be certain that there won't be orange elves wandering or causing damage nearby, and besides, they can move that little thing. A hibernation pod is probably enough to fit them all into a family. For now, it can be considered as an additional layer of solid buff to prevent damage from overeaters. The sunlight shines through the gaps between branches and leaves into the forest. When you look up at the sun in the sky from under the dense branches and leaves of the tree, you will appreciate the flavor of the scenery on the blue star that overlaps with light and shadow, this is the perspective of insects. If you can see all the light spots on top of your head, it proves that the current environment is not too dense and you need to walk forward to calculate. There is moss on the stones on the ground to settle down, and even the sunlight only has a chance to shine here in autumn and winter. Outsiders and horizontal cannons were walking along the route they were patrolling today, which was some distance from the waste factory, but not too far. It's still daylight outside, but here it's like a dawn before the sun rises. Wow. You can still write poetry. Poetry is something that ordinary units cannot understand without exposure to relevant knowledge, referring to things they have not learned or have not learned well. The outsider just recited a sentence with emotion, and Hen Pao thought her hobby was to write poetry in the wind. Actually, compared to real poetry, it doesn't count either. On the way to work with foreign guests, Hen Pao made a surprising sound. They talked and laughed all the way, but missed out on many of the scenery in this forest. For example, in a green thicket just passed by, there was a beetle lying on the tree, the horned frog next to the wet soil under the tree, 
watching these tall little squirrels with every move of life behind the leaves, birds building nests on higher branches, they are all unique landscapes of this planet. This planet is so beautiful. If I had learned how to write poetry, I would have left an impression on this planet. I envy you all living here. The monologue in the heart doesn't sound as gentle as it appears on the surface. Foreign guests have always been humble in their impression. Of course, she wouldn't mind being humble all the time. You haven't learned it before. It's really fake. That one you just did was clearly amazing. No, I admit it after really learning it. The previous path was with horizontal cannons walking ahead. When the horizontal cannon realized that the surrounding environment could already be described as dark, it realized that it was the outsiders leading the way. Her recitations just now distracted him, to the point where they had already walked a distance on this unfamiliar route before he realized he had deviated from the original plan. Are you sure we're taking this route? Hmm. I have a surprise for you, it happens to be around here. Surprise. Seeing the back of the foreign guest still moving forward, the horizontal cannon stopped in its tracks. The outsider heard the sound of footsteps disappearing, so they followed and stopped. The real trouble with the oil racing tube, with a heart full of thoughts, he rolled his eyes with his back to the horizontal cannon and didn't forget to change his face before turning around. She made up a story for the horizontal cannon. Before meeting you, I wandered around for a few days. I remember one day, I saw seven short black figures. They were sitting around, and I heard them mention Decepticons in their conversation. I was scared when I was alone, so I ran away. Let's go take a look, maybe we can find Decepticons' nest. Seven Shadows Outsider, are you sure you're not the seven dwarfs in the fairy tale of magic changing blue star? If this stone is hammered down, it will be hung on the wall and imprisoned. Is there actually a possibility that even outsiders don't know what the seven dwarfs are? Dwarves and numbers are not someone's patent unless applied for. Why didn't you tell the hornet? Hun Pao believes that for such an important matter, theoretically speaking, telling your idol bumblebee is the first choice you would make. Besides, the idol is right beside you, still under the same roof. Hung Pao could I tell him everything? I hope you can make contributions, Hung Pao, after all, our common interests are so rare. It's not too late to tell him again later. Friends are built on idols. The idol is right in front of us, it's also out of reach. And my friend you, you are right beside me. She chuckled softly, even when she smiled, she was so gentle. This logic seems quite touching. Yeah, how could you tell the bumblebee everything? There can be some little secrets between friends. I don't know if you think the same way. Wow. You're such an interesting Z891 inch she was actually the first person to think of such a good thing. Raise your elbow to support the lady's shoulder armor, and feel that she will be a friend worth making and will definitely be very good to you. Of course I want to share the good news with my friends. To my good friends. A half-second pause was passed by a smile and a turn of the head to look ahead. Outsiders lead the way ahead, while horizontal cannons follow behind. They only need to patrol this area, so as long as they can plan their route any way they want, as long as they can ensure that they walk all the way before dark, then the patrol task will be completed. The light was dim, and her painted surface seemed to blend in with this gloomy environment. Just as Heng Pao was asking if she needed to turn on the car lights and explore the way ahead, she suddenly stopped. Fortunately, the horizontal cannon stopped and grounded in time. I almost bumped into her. Heng Pao, I suddenly remembered that I dropped something on the base. Wait for me, I'll be back soon. Oh. Then come back quickly. The outsider turned around and ran towards the light he had just turned away from. The light spots under the shade of the trees change from less to more as they move forward. Like a scattered star disk scattered on her body, it failed to restrain any further steps forward. Because the light that should have shone on her face together was blocked by the brim above her head, blocking it. 
Do you still remember that she once lived a relatively happy life in a group, and briefly forgot her obsession with seeking revenge? But now the opportunity in front of her has ignited the spark in her own trench ashes, the brim of the hat blowing head dot on cannot block the wind, igniting the spark into an indestructible flame, which also burns stronger and stronger. She ran for a distance and charged the underground device to take off. Flying is the fastest way to move on this planet, despite obstacles. She can finally put an end to the obsession that has tormented her for years. White clouds are blowing on her face. She needs to brew her inner emotions now to embrace her own light. But before that, let's take a look and see if her obsession was ready to resist her attack a few minutes ago. It's strange, why does the hibernation pod appear in that place? Moving heavy objects is not an easy task for large units either. The bumblebee put down the hibernation pod it was carrying on its shoulders. Just as I sat down and breathed a sigh of relief, I heard the black-faced god moving towards me, 